The University of Georgia has won the toss. They have elected to defer to the second half, so Kim, the Yellow Jackets will get their hands on the football first. Well, Sean Jones uh, uh, will face a, a Georgia defense that is not physically dominating, but they have played extremely well. They're one of the top teams in the country and fewest points allowed, and that's the mark of a defense. It's not necessarily how you look or the stats or whatever. It's how many points you give up your opponents and in that regard the University of Georgia defensive team is one of the nation's leaders so a big challenge for the senior from Thomasville Sean Jones and early on this is an important series because what you don't want to do is let the crowd really get into the ball game that early. Yellow jackets in white tops and white britches trimmed in black and gold and the Bo Georgia Bulldogs in their red home uniforms and their silver britches out here this afternoon a crowd of 85,434 a partisan Georgia crowd awaits the 87th renewal of this, the big one, here between the hedges at Sanford Stadium. Todd Peterson will be kicking off for the Georgia Tech of uh, Georgia Bulldogs out of Valdosta. Back deep will be Jason McGill. To the opposite side and to the near side will be Lethon Flowers. Came always a few goosebumps prior to this great rivalry between Georgia Tech and Georgia. Big matchup, always a lot of tension for this ball game, Bob. So Georgia going west towards east. The boot by Peterson is end over end. Going to come up to Flowers on the near side at the 6. Straight up the middle, across the 20, cuts it back and gets nailed at the 20-yard line at the near hash mark by Willie Muschamp out of Rome, Georgia. And that's where the Yellow Jackets will open this ball game first and 10 from the 20-yard line. Flowers try to take the ball from his left back up on the middle return, but knocked down right at the 20. So Jones will take over there and operate tech out of that multiple set offense university of georgia in a three four defense and during the game you'll see a little bit of the georgia tech shade 50 they try to spread the line around they have jimmy lincoln and michael smith in an eye formation handoff goes to jimmy lincoln he goes right side spins up to the 29 yard line and picks up a chunk Tailback isolation off the right side, Bob. And the hole was there, and Lincoln cut it back left. The linebackers over-pursued, and Lincoln cut back on them. Picked up nine and a half yards. Ball just shy of the first down mark. Right corner, Chris Wilson from Southwest High in Macon on the stop. The Yellow Jackets again go to the I formation. Throw receivers to each side of the field. Hand off straight up the middle for the first down is Jimmy Lincoln and Moore. Grinding his way up towards the 35-yard line. Dale Phillips from Advanced North Carolina, the referee for today's ball game. So Kim, the Yellow Jackets have picked up 15 yards on the first two plays of this possession. And that's got to be a real confidence boost, even though it's very, very early. But the fact that Tech's able to get that kind of yardage in two running plays has got to give them a little boost. Yellow Jackets send Rodriguez and McGill to the far side. The handoff quick hitter right up the middle to Michael Smith. Fumble Michael Smith, and the ball is lured at the 42-yard line, and the Georgia Bulldogs recover the fumble as it's cocked up on the near hash mark by Michael Smith, the fullback for Georgia Tech. Big hole up inside. It looks like somebody just reached in and pulled the ball out on Smith. It bounded back up the field towards Tech's goal line, and Georgia fell on it at the Tech 47. Tom Wallace, the lucky guy with the pigskin there for the Georgia Bulldogs, and already they're in business. They've scored a ton of points in the first quarter of the ball games during their 8-2 and two season. For the Georgia Bulldogs, they go from the divide backfield to the I formation with scatback Harrison Hurst on the toss sweep, cuts him inside, across the 40, still on his feet, and knocked down at the 42-yard line by Tex outside linebacker Tom Johnson. Toss sweep, which is a base play of the Georgia offense, where they try to get Hurst on the corner and let him read the field to take it wherever he thinks he can go with it. Hole was off the left side. He turned it upfield, got down to the Tech 38-yard line, a pickup of about five yards. Second down, a long five. Georgia going left to right here in the first period. They go to the divide backfield with Hurst and Strong on the play action. The pass is undropped at the 40-yard line. Going up the ladder was Franker Andre Hastings. Bobbled it, it came down. Good play by Coleman Rudolph and Marlon Williams. That time Williams was reading Hurst, flanked to the right. He was coming on a slant screen over the middle. It's a little underneath throw. And what they hope to do is let the rush come in and then dump it over that rush with Hastings and that great ability to try to get in the middle of the field. But that time the ball was thrown a little behind him. Williams in good coverage, incomplete. 
Third down and six for the Bulldogs. They are on the Georgia Tech 38-yard line. The ball on the far hash mark. They go from a divide backfield to the I formation. Fullback is Max Strong. The scat Georgia back moved. movement on the line. Georgia moved on the left side that time. I believe their left guard, uh, Steve Roberts, moved. That's going to be a five-yard penalty on Georgia. So they'll move the ball back towards the west end zone. The official, Dale Phillips from North Carolina, signaled the penalty on the offense five yards. So the ball goes back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be third down and a long 10 for the Bulldogs. Georgia Tech again. No, they must play disciplined assignment football against this Georgia offense. First five games averaging over 500 yards and haven't really slacked off lately. Not a lot of points, but 423 yards of total offense. He'll throw two receivers to the far side, one to the near side, as Zyre goes in the shotgun with Hurst and Strong. He's stepping at his own 49-yard line, gets the pitch, on the drop, over the middle, and the ball is complete at the 29-yard line of Georgia Tech for a Georgia first down. They had double coverage that time, Bob. They ran a man up underneath. Wilkinson came in, but Hastings slid down up at the 30-yard line, and Zyre drilled the ball in there. Big first down for Georgia. Pickup of 13 yards on the pass by Marietta's Eric Zyre. So they break the huddle with Brian Bohannon split to the near side as George is in the I formation. Let's watch Andre Hastings to the far side of the field. Toss, sweep right, cutting inside and spinning around as Garrison Hurst. And he finally gets knocked down about the 26-yard line of Georgia Tech by strong safety Kevin Peoples. Same play, toss, sweep to the right side. Tech played it pretty well over there on the corner. Hurst tried to go back inside, but uh, finally knocked down and around the 26. Pick up a four. Second down and six. The ball on the Georgia Tech 26-yard line. They'll place it between the hash marks. Hastings and Shannon Mitchell to the top side of the field. To the near side, it's Brian Bohan. And again, the dogs in the I formation on second and six from the Tech 26-yard line. On the snap, it's Zyre. Hand off to Hurst. Finds a hole across the 25-20. Cuts it to the sideline inside the 15 and out of bounds at the Georgia Tech 12. And Kim, a late flag is down at the 12-yard line. Might be a face mask. Let's check it. Let's check the call there. Hurst on the, on the sprint draw off the right side. Let's see. Might be a hole call on Georgia. Let's check the call on the, the official call here. Hurst hit it on the right side. Tech uh, rotated over to the other side of the field. Face mask. Face mask on Tech. Now that's going to hurt the Yellow Jackets here. We're scoreless, just underway. 11.51 left here in the first period between the hedges on a gray, overcast, and chilly Saturday afternoon to end the month of November. So the ball will be placed on the near hash mark to the Georgia sideline. It's at the eight, first and goal for the Bulldogs. They send Hurst from the slot. He moves into the divide backfield with Max Strong on first and goal from the eight. On the snap, handoff goes to Garrison Hurst. Goes left side and the, the ball, ball is loose. Tech got Humble it. Georgia Tech, Tech has it. recovered it inside the five at the one yard line. Might be a safety here. I mean a touchback. Let's check it. Tech got the ball. Hurst was hit up around the two or three Bob and the ball fell loose and Rodney Wilkerson came up with it. The official still trying to determine I think whether or not it should be down in the field to play close to the goal line or whether it should be a touchback for Tech and I haven't given the signal yet first down Tech I do know that but it looks like it's going to be right down there on the goal line so a big play by Wilkerson first strip to the ball down there it fumbled loose and Wilkerson came up with it the official's going to rule it's just outside the nose of the goal line not a touchback so a big play by Tech's defense all right we're scoreless still here and there's timeout on the field, and we should be resuming action in just a moment. So Georgia Tech gets a break there. And they are deep, deep, deep in their own territory. Right on the goal line, first and ten for Georgia Tech. Sean Jones just jumps across the line of scrimmage to try to get the, the uh, football further west. That'll make it second down and long for the Yellow Jackets. Bob, down here on the goal line, not much room to do things. You just try to wedge out with your guard, tackle in center, and quarterback just tries to fold up in, the, in there and pick up whatever he can. All right, Yellow Jackets will flank Keenan Walker. 
to the near side of the field. They go into the I formation, and the handoff goes to Michael Smith. Michael Smith, the ball is loose again, and it's Georgia's football at the one-yard line. Second fumble for Smith. The pressure got in there and knocked the ball loose uh, on Smith in Georgia. After fumbling the tech down on the goal line, comes right back with it. Three turnovers already here in the first four minutes of the football game. Well, it's back inside the one-yard line for Georgia quarterback Eric Zier and the Bulldogs. So it come, goes around, comes around in this one. Three fumbles in the first four minutes and 54 seconds of the big one. Eric Hurst taking his time now comes to the huddle following the sideline from Coach Ray Goff. Ray Goff one and two in his career against Georgia Tech. They come up to the line in the I formation. Strong the fullback. Garrison Hurst the scatback. On first and goal, the handoff goes to Max Strong, and he's in for the touchdown straight up the middle. Georgia takes the lead, six to nothing. So Bob, after Tech fumble the ball, Michael Smith up in the field to play the 42-yard line early on the third play of the game. Georgia went marching down the field. Hurst looked like he was going to get in for the touchdown, fumble it back to Tech. Two plays later, Michael Smith fumbled it back to Georgia, and now Strong off the left side gets Georgia on the board. Chris Miller will snap, Scott Armstrong will hold, and Todd Peterson ready for the point after touchdown, 37 of 38 this year, and the PAT is up, tack on another for the Bulldogs, and with 11.03 left to go here in the first period, it's Georgia 7, Georgia Tech ready to boot it away, the doggies going left to right here in the first period, Peterson high, end over end kick, again near side, it's Lethon Flowers again at the 5, straight up the middle, across the 20, cuts it inside the field and up to the 25 yard line, a good run back by Lethon Flowers, and the Yellow Jackets will be driving west with 10.58 left to go here in the first period. They trail the Bulldogs 7-0. Bob, in the first series of the game, when Tech uh, started from their 20, they had three running plays. Jimmy Lincoln had two for 15 yards, and Smith hit a big hole up the middle and would have gained uh, a lot of yardage on the play, but the ball was stripped loose. So the running game early on looked like it was working for Tech. Georgia Tech with McGill, Rodriguez, and Walker out for the pass. William Bell in the one-back set gets the handoff, rolls left side, now cuts it back inside across the line of scrimmage for a couple of tough yards up to the 28-yard line of Georgia Tech where he stood up and knocked down by Mike Jones, the brother of Tech quarterback Sean Jones from Thomasville. Not much room there. Bell did a nice job to get uh, the ball upfield. Looks like he got hit in contact about the line of scrimmage of 25, but fought his way on up to the 28. Brent Goolsby split to the far side of the field, flanked by Bobby Rodriguez. Tight end is Anthony Rice in the I formation. It goes to the tail of the eye, Jimmy Lincoln, and he has nowhere to go. He gets dropped at the line of scrimmage as he tried to go across the left side, hit and knocked down by nose guard Casey Barnum from Jacksonville, the senior. So third down and a long six for the Yellow Jackets. Just five minutes into the big one here in Athens, and the Dogs have scored on a Georgia Tech fumble to take a 7-0 lead. High third down and six possession play for the Yellow Jackets. They send McGill and Walker to the far side. Coming in the near side is Bobby Rodriguez. William Bell in the one-back set on the play-action pass by Jones. Looking, fires it behind Bell, and it goes off his fingertips and out of bounds. A good thing it was incomplete, because it would have been uh, not much for Georgia Tech there. Great pressure by Mitch Davis, the outside linebacker, the junior from Mobile, Alabama. So Jason Bender will be on to boot it away for Georgia Tech. Jones trying to go downfield. Georgia had it covered. He tried to dump it off to Bell. Bell couldn't hold on to it. Thrown behind him. Had a chance for the first time if he catches it. Here's the snap and the punt by Jason Bender. Spinning high to Andre Hastings. Fair catch signal at the 32-yard line. And it's caught. And the fair catch by Andre Hastings. A boot of 39 yards by Jason Bender. And the Bulldogs in good field position. First and 10 from their own 32-yard line. Good high kick by Bender that time. Good coverage. Hastings, who's dangerous on that punt return team, just signal for the fair catch. So get an opportunity now to watch the Georgia Bulldogs on their third possession of the opening period. They'll send Bohannon to the far side, flanked by Andre Hastings. To the near side is Shannon Mitchell. In the shotgun again with Max Strong and Garrison Hurst. The handoff goes to Max Strong, finds a hole across the 35, up to the 38-yard line of Georgia where he's knocked down by inside linebacker Jamal Cox. 
That's a little draw play that time from the spread formation. Hurst on the right, Strong on the left. Georgia now going without a huddle. Hurst in that spread formation. That's what FSU hurt Tech with. All right, again, two receivers to the far side, one to the near side. In the shotgun is Eric Zier at the 32, takes the three-step drop, pulls up at the 31, across the middle, complete to his flanker, Andre Hastings, inside Georgia Tech territory, down to the Yellow Jacket 47-yard line for a first down. Rodney Wilkerson wrapping up Andre Hastings in Tech territory. No pressure that time on Zier, and that was the key. He had plenty of time for Hastings flank to the left to work himself open, coming back across the right, the middle of the field. Again, the no-huddle offense. The clock rolling, 8.55 left here in the first period. The snap and the shuttle pass to Garrison Hurst for a, maybe a yard and a half. He's stacked up and knocked down at the Georgia Tech 45-yard line. It is Raleigh Boulware, the primary tackler for Georgia Tech. Again, they're in the no-huddle. They send Bohannon and Hastings to the far side with Shannon Mitchell, the near side of the field. They're in the shotgun. There's the snap. Pulling up is Zyre. Pressure away. Fires it complete at the 32-yard line across the 25 to the 24. And another first down, a play by Andre Hastings, the junior flanker from Morrow High School. Zyre did a nice job of getting away from Tech's pressure on the outside. Tech had the heat on him with Tom Johnson and Coleman Rudolph, but Zyre stepped up in the pocket, found Hastings on the same crossing pattern. He hit him two plays previously. First down, Georgia. Four of five passing for Marietta's Eric Zyre. First and ten from the Tech 24. Handoff goes to Max Strong across the 25 to the 24-yard line, and he is dragged down from behind by the junior, Richard Kimsey. Kimsey looks a little slow getting up, playing on that bad knee. He's, he's down, Bob. I'm not sure he's going to be able to get up. Richard Kimsey is favoring... The ankle once again is the Tech Training Corps, led by Jay Shoup, running from the other side of the field. Kimsey right in front of the Georgia sideline. He is down on both knees now at the 24-yard line. So not a good sign, Kim, for Georgia Tech's defense. No, it was good to get Kimsey back because he plays the run so well, but uh, I, I mentioned his knee. It's, it, it is his ankle. He's coming back from an injured ankle and looks like that might be what he's re-injured he's not going to be able to get up exactly eight minutes left to go here in the opening period the 87th renewal of the big one georgia tech and georgia will have more first period action after this and he's right at the line of scrimmage and he's taken down by cornerback Dirk curly day blitz that time by marlon williams coming in on the outside on the on the blitz Curly Day, I should say, wrapped uh, Hurst up right back in the backfield, fell forward the 24, loss of a yard. Georgia comes up to the line, trying to capitalize on a 7-0 Bulldog lead, 7-15 in the clock rolling here in the first. Again, they go to the shotgun on third down and 10 from the Georgia Tech 24. There's the snap, the drop by Zyre, he's in trouble, gets away, he does not get away from Coleman Rudolph, and he surpasses Marco Coleman now in the uh, category of uh, being one of the top defenders in Georgia Tech history. 29 career sacks. He just broke the Georgia Tech record, Bob, with that sack. Coleman Rudolph, 6'4", 267-pound senior from Valdosta High School. And it'll be a 44-yard field goal try. They'll spot it between the hash marks for Todd Peterson. Scott Rissmiller will be the snapper. The holder is Scott Armstrong, the punter. A 44-yard attempt. There's the snap, the hold, and the boot is going to be long enough, long enough, and no good. It's going to be wide to the right. So the Yellow Jackets dodge a bullet right there, and with timeout on the field, it's Georgia 7, Georgia Tech nothing. 6.26 left to go here in the first period of the big one. Back to Athens after this on the WCNN Georgia Tech. With McGill and Walker to the... Bottom side of the field. Walker now goes in motion behind Sean Jones to the far side. Three-step drop. Sean Jones fires it and completes it right at the 38-yard line of the Yellow Jackets to flanker Bobby Rodriguez for a first down. Rodriguez now needing two more receptions to pass John Sias on the Georgia Tech list. That was just a little slant pattern, almost a little short post over the middle. Georgia in a zone that time. Jones waited. He got in that little slot, drilled the ball in there. Rodriguez went down as he caught it. 99 more yards for Rodriguez, all time. Georgia Tech goes right side to Dorsey Levens, jumps over the line of scrimmage, and across the 40-yard line.
to the 42 on the right side of the line where he's taken down by the linebacker Randall Godfrey, the great-looking freshman from Lowndes County High School in Valdosta. Charlie Clemens also helping out Randall Godfrey. A pickup of four yards, second down and six. Georgia Tech draft, uh, driving west here in the first period. They are going right to left. In the one back, it's William Bell on second and six from the Tech 42-yard line. Long count, three-step drop by Jones. Fires at far sideline, complete to Bobby Rodriguez again for another Georgia Tech first down inside Bulldog territory. At the 48-yard line of the Dogs, Chris Wilson from the right corner coming up to knock Bobby Rodriguez out of play. Bob, that was just a little check read for Rodriguez and Jones. Chris Wilson, the cornerback, is playing way off 10-yard cushion. Rodriguez read it, so did Jones. He did a little hitch pattern over there. Jones was perfect with a strike. Georgia Tech in the one back. It's William Bell on first and 10 from the Bulldog 48-yard line. John Jones on the count, gives it off to William Bell, spins across the line of scrimmage, still on his feet, and finally knocked down for a gain of maybe one yard. Live left tackle Tom Wallace and nose guard Casey Barnum putting a big hit on William Bell. To make it second down and nine for the Jackets. 5.05 left here in the first period. Georgia seven. Georgia Tech nothing on a one-yard run by fullback Max Strong. Jackets will send McGill to the far side, flanked by Bobby Rodriguez. They're in a divide backfield. It's quarterback Sean Jones on second and nine. Fakes the drop. Now at the 45. Goes for the bomb. Near side corner of the end zone. McGill over his outstretched fingers and incomplete. Boy, Tech wanted a pass interference call bad there, Bob. McGill was being pushed out of the route and pushed over on the sideline by Al Jackson as he tried to make the adjustment to get behind jo uh, Jackson for the catch. But the official was stumbling. I don't think he had a chance to see it. Didn't throw the flag. Incomplete pass. There was contact at the five-yard line. A tremendous throw by Sean Jones over the fingertips of the diving Jason McGill. Three receivers set to the near far side of the field. Rodriguez, Keenan Walker, Cedric Zachary on the other side. It's Brent Goolsby. No backs in the backfield. Jones on the drop. Sprints the right side. At the line of scrimmage, throws it. And the ball is going to be incomplete at the Georgia 35-yard line. It was caught by Cedric Zachary, but he was out of bounds. So it's fourth down and nine now for the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets in another punting situation. Tough luck on that drive. Tech, after starting the 27, crossed uh, midfield and got a first down. But Bell got one on first down, two incomplete passes. Bender's now going to have to kick it. He sets up at his own 40-yard line, gets a good snap, gets into it at the 43 and boots it to Andre Hastings. Another fair catch at the 13-yard line right between the hash marks. Good coverage by the Jackets. A 34-yard punt for Jason Bender. And with timeout on the field, 4.27 remaining here in the opening period, it's Georgia 7, Georgia Tech nothing. On the Georgia's time to the left side of the line. Andre Hastings to the top of the field. Hassan Graham to the bottom. They go from the divide backfield into the eye with the scat back Garrison Hurst on first down. Hurst tries to go up the middle, goes nowhere, gets knocked down for the loss by Coleman Rudolph. A little bit of pushing and shoving going on at the 15-yard line. The officials try to break up the dogs and the jackets. A loss of a yard, second down and 11. The ball on the 12-yard line of the University of Georgia. Good play by the All-America. Coleman Rudolph knifing in from his tackle position, hitting Hurst in the backfield on the tailback isolation. Second and 11 from the Bulldog 12. Again, watch flanker Andre Hastings to the top of the field and Hassan Graham to the bottom of the field. Again, they split from the eye formation to the divide backfield on second and 11 on the drop. It's Eric Zier looking, has Hurst at the 14-yard line. He has no more. He gets Got knocked out of bounds by Curly Day. Got a hole call on Georgia here. That time Coleman Rudolph was held, and the official on top of it threw the flag. Hurst only got a couple of yards up to the 14-yard line, but I'm sure here with a holding, Tech's going to Tech's gonna take the penalty. Let's check it and see what they're going to do. Officials now coming over to see Ray Goff, who's livid on the sideline. Dale Phillips, the referee official, from the ACC. The official and Goff are having it on the sideline. I don't know what he's upset about, but nevertheless, uh, now he's going to come back, and I think... Uh, Tech looking over the sideline whether or not they want the penalty or the play. There's a holding call would be half the distance. Ball was put in play up at the 12-yard line. That put it at the 6, but 
Georgia only made a couple of yards on a pass to her side of the backfield over in the flats uh, as he was hit, got up to the 14. They're going to decline it. So Georgia Tech declines the penalty. The Bulldogs deep in their territory, third down and nine from the 14-yard line. Jackets waiting on defense. They're looking right into the West Stands. Predominant color is white and gold for Georgia Tech. Bulldogs break the huddle. They go to the I formation. The fullback, Max Strong. The tailback, Garrison Hurst, on the fake. Rolling at the five. It's Zyre. He's nailed at the seven-yard line by linebacker Tom Johnson in Georgia. We'll have to boot it away. Tom Johnson and Marlon Williams came on the blitz from the outside. And as Hurst tried to elude the rush, Johnson got him as he came in from the backside and knocked him down. Tech's defense now starting to pressure Georgia pretty consistently. First, not able to really establish anything other than that first series of the game when Georgia fumbled down there on the goal line. So Tech's defense playing pretty tough now. Sure. Tech should have great field position standing right at the Centennial logo at midfield is Michael Smith, averaging 14 yards on a punt return, including a 72-yarder this year, homecoming against Duke. It's Scott Armstrong, right at the goal line, gets his foot into it, evades Jason McGill's rush. It's Smith at the Bulldog 48, across the 45, and still on his feet, across the 41, the 40, and inside Bulldog territory around the 39-yard line, a punt of 49, uh, 40 yards, Kim, and a return of nine tough yards from Michael Smith there, trying to redeem himself from earlier fumbling twice and leading to the initial score for Georgia here in the first period. Tech with excellent field position. Good defensive stand after Tech moved the ball a little bit, got it across midfield, but forced to punt to Georgia at the 13-yard line. Tech's defense really stiffened. Sacked uh, Zaire back there on third down, and after the kick uh, that time by Armstrong, that Smith returned uh, just inside the 40, 39-yard line call it of Georgia Tech in excellent field position. 2.43 to go first period. Georgia 7, Tech nothing. McGill to the top of the field. Flanker Bobby Rodriguez to the near side. The one back is William Bell. First and 10 from the 39. It's the play action pass. Again the bomb. Down the middle. Into the end zone. Up for grass. McGill has it knocked away. Jason McGill in the end zone by free safety Greg Trimble. And Kim off the arm of Sean Jones. It looked good, but it held up there. And three Bulldog defenders all went up for grabs with Jason McGill. Well, I don't think you saw the free safety Greg Tremble come over that time. Uh, McGill had his man beat on the corner over there on the post pattern. He didn't see Tremble the free safety. He came over, had contact, knocked the ball away. Dorsey Levens beat. In the eye backfield for Georgia Tech on second and ten from the Bulldog 39-yard line. Calling signals is quarterback Sean Jones. Receivers to each side of the field. Three-step drops. Jones still looking. Goes to the far sideline and overthrows the receiver, Keenan Walker, who had a great lane, Kim, down the sidelines for a touchdown. If that ball is on target, again, the strong free safety, Greg Tremble, coming in to help out. Well, that was a two-deep zone that time, and they got uh, past the cornerback, the Walker did, on an up pattern, and Jones was trying to throw it in between the, the uh, deep safety and the cornerback. The ball was just thrown a little high, incomplete. Two of seven for Sean Jones, including not tying up with Jason McGill. So the Yellow Jackets will send Rodriguez, Walker, and McGill to the top side of the field on third and ten. There's the long drop by Jones, the scramble. He's in tech territory at the 50-yard line, fires it in and out of the hands of Jason McGill. A flag. And a flag goes down at the 31-yard line in Georgia territory. Got a flag back up here. Let's see what the call is going to be. A flag away from the play. Right in front of the Georgia sideline. Holding call against Tech. So Georgia will decline it here, and Tech will be forced to punt. So a couple of times, Kim, here in different possessions for Georgia Tech. Quarterback Sean Jones looking for Jason McGill for the bomb. Bobby misread that first play. He didn't see the free safety come over on the deep play, and Trimble broke it up. Well, Jason Bender will punt it away, averaging 36 and a half for two punts, 39 and 34. Hastings is back at the 10. There's the snap and the pooch punt. It's spinning. Hastings going to let it go. And it takes a bounce at the 10-yard line and down to the 8-yard line, a tech bounce. And Bulldogs, again, will be deep in their territory, first and 10. They lead it 7 nothing with 2.12 to go here in the first period. Kevin Peoples was the one that downed the ball at the 8-yard line. Bender hit a little pooch kick and looked like he was going to take a roll sideways but then took a favorable tech hop towards the goal line. Peoples very immediately downed it at the 8-yard line. 
Well, the University of Georgia defense being led by quarterback Eric Zier, the sophomore from Marietta. Strong and Hurst in a divide backfield. Now Hurst comes into the slot to the right side of the line. The lone back is Max Strong. On first down, the pitch goes to Strong. Across the 6-7, across the 10, has a hole, dives across the 15. And a big gain on first down for Max Strong and the University of Georgia. Mike Williams coming up from free safety to make the stop at the 15-yard line. Gain of six and a half yards, make it second and a long three for the Bulldogs. Freddie Coger checked in late off the sideline, came at the left outside backer position, and Georgia was able to hook him on the toss sweep with Strong on the right side. Hastings to the far side of the field, handoff goes to Hurst, dives his way across the line of scrimmage, trying to follow a blocker. Straight up the middle is Garrison Hurst, the junior, taken down by Jamal Cox and Richard Kimsey. It'll be third down and one yard to go for the Bulldogs. 122 left to go here in the first period. A one-yard run by Max Strong, capitalizing on a Michael Smith fumble at the one-yard line of the Jackets. That's the scoring here. Coleman Rudolph comes in for Kevin Peoples for Georgia Tech. Yellow Jacket defense trying to hold on third and one. Georgia in the I formation from the 17-yard line. The call by Zaire and the die the play-action pass. Zaire going down the middle deep. Deep and long over the head at the 40-yard line of the flanker Andre Hastings. With 53 seconds left, trailed foot-by-foot foot, Kim by Lethon Flowers. Good coverage that time by Flowers. Uh, Hastings flank wide to the left. Tech in a three-deep zone. He had a little bit of support, but Flowers had excellent coverage. Coleman Rudolph really decked Zaire right when he let the ball go. So Georgia's going to be forced to punt here. Scott Armstrong coming on for his second punt. The last one went 40 yards. Michael Smith at his own 43-yard line to the near side. There's a high snap, but Armstrong hauls it in from his nine. He boots it away. Backpedaling is Smith. He takes it at the 34-yard line on the near side, has it across the 40. And Michael Smith on his feet and knocked down at the 44-yard line of Georgia Tech. So again, Kim, the Yellow Jackets will start in good field position. Excellent field position, and Bob Tech's going to have to take advantage of these two opportunities. Uh, they've, they've had good field position here to start things out on their last two possessions. The last time they had the ball at the Georgia 39-yard line, threw three straight incomplete passes. They've got to get some points on the board here. 40 seconds to go in the first period, Georgia 7 Tech nothing. Georgia Tech in all white uniforms and gold helmets here between the hedges on first and ten from their 44. The handoff goes to Jimmy Lincoln, tries to cut the corner, does so, and across the 50-yard line and inside Georgia Bulldog territory by a couple of feet. The Yellow Jackets with 34 seconds left to go. A good block by the split end Jason McGill getting help from Michael Smith, the fullback, allowing Lincoln to pick up some yardage. Good block by Smith, and as you said, Bob, that enabled Lincoln to get around the corner on the sideline out to the 50-yard line. Pick up of six. Wallace, Barnum, and Jackson, the front three for the Georgia Bulldogs. Yellow Jackets send two receivers to the far side. They're in the I formation. It goes right up the middle to Jimmy Lincoln. Lincoln still on his feet across the 45 for a first down for Georgia Tech to the Georgia 44-yard line. Tech with a double flanker to the right, uh, right wide side of the field. Spread the Georgia defense, came back inside to uh, Lincoln, and Tech has picked up their fourth first down of the ball game. Georgia, on the other hand, also has four. The clock now rolling, under 20 seconds. Dorsey Levens, the tail of the eye formation with the fullback Jimmy Lincoln. Sean Jones, just a little shuttle pass at the midfield. Turning the corner is Dorsey Levens. Levens has inside the 41 yard line, and he gets pushed out of bounds with seven seconds left here in the first period by Randall Godfrey. There's a play, Bob, we haven't seen much at all for Tech. The option play was Sean Jones, faking the ball inside, coming down the line, reading the outside backer, pitching the ball to Levens, got a good block on the corner, and with his speed and power, turned it up, field momentum, and picked up four yards to the 40. Jimmy Lincoln will be the one back for Sean Jones on second and six. Georgia Tech driving west, right to left, in the waning seconds of the first period. The handoff goes up the middle to Jimmy Lincoln. Lincoln cuts it right side, still on his feet, and is going to be just a couple of inches short of another first down as the first period ends here between the hedges at Sanford Stadium in Athens, Georgia. The ball down to the Georgia 35-yard line. That is the end of the first quarter. So we go on a six-man front, and Sean Jones leans in, and I think he got the first down of the 34, but that's all he got. He got a couple of feet trying to sneak behind his right guard. 
who is 277. His left guard is 313. The center is 270. Ball just outside the 34. They may measure this thing. They may say he didn't get two feet, that he only got one and a half, but they're going to measure. Dogs lead 7 to nothing. We are early in the second quarter. In that first quarter, throwing at John Jones only two out of eight, as opposed to as a team, Tech has rushed it ten times for 52 yards. One inch shy. He missed it an inch. Tech becomes fourth down and an inch. Boy, was that measurement close. Here's a guy that needed a foot, and he got 11 inches. Ball on the 34 and a half. Tech brings big William Bell in the big back. Dog fans up cheering for the defense. The players waving their arms. They want the crowd into a two. Georgia Tech power eye. Nobody split out. And on a sneak, they hit the quarterback going straight in. And I don't know. Sean Jones tried to creep in there. That could be a very large play as our missed field goal was very large early. Sean Jones trying to get behind the three big men in the middle. The spot of the ball is the thing that's going to declare it. Some of the dogs think that uh, we've got the ball, but the officials say, no, we're going to measure it. Oh, man. From up here, uh, Louis Phillips thinks he got an inch or two. And they finally make the teams back off a little, or the Georgia team is bent down and looking. And now they pull the stick out, and they didn't get it. It's Georgia's ball. They couldn't get an inch. They ran a sneak and didn't get it. That could be very, very crucial and critical later on. All along, Damon Ward, a young linebacker, was jumping up and down and saying he didn't get it. My gosh, he didn't. Georgia's ball on their own 34 and a half, and they lead 7 to nothing. Boy, not a bad goal line stand at the 35-yard no. line. <laughs> Dogs come out. Swan gets over the ball. Slot two men. Texan a 4-2. The back shift. From a split to an eye. Zaire to Hurst coming up the middle. From behind, one man got him on the 38-yard line, and that's Coleman Rudolph, the defensive tackle. He grabbed his shoes from behind, and Rodney Wilkinson, the linebacker, hit him on the side. And they put the ball up on the 39. He got four, second down and six. Tennessee defeated Vanderbilt today, 29 to 25 by four points. After trailing 19 to 10 in the middle of the fourth quarter, Tennessee had to really rally to win. Uh-oh, movement on the right side of the dog line, and we are now going to have a penalty. A little shoving after that. Warren, what do you got? These are the kinds of things, Larry, that always upset a coaching staff. You come out with a good run on fourth down after you've gotten the excitement and the emotion working for you after stopping on fourth and one, and then you make a mistake. But uh, there on that first play, uh, Hurst had a little more running room, just a little bit more, and he might have broken it for a long way. So what you got to have now is just a little more room for him. He doesn't need much, but he hasn't had enough today. Illegal procedure, five-yard penalty against Georgia. It's second and ten. So they lost Hurst's run. Second down, about ten and a half. Dogs put three receivers out this time, and Zire drops back to pass. And now he's going to run 30, 35, 38, slides down on the 40. So he got about five yards back. Mike Williams, a free safety, threw his body across him as Zire did that feet first, safety first slide. Ball up on the uh, 39 and a half, third down and a long full five, seven and up in Georgia, early second quarter. Yeah, for a quarterback, it's safety first because if you stay up, you're liable to get popped, and the other guy knows you're fair game too. Texan a 4 4. Georgia's back shift on third down and five. Sire going to take it, flag down, looking, dumps it out to Max Strong in the flat. They hit him up on the 45. It might be a first time, but watch the penalty first, however. Rodney Wilkinson, a linebacker, got it. There was a penalty on the play called early on the play. He hit Max Strong, the running back, 
streaking out over to the right side, and the Dogs may have lost the first down with a penalty here. That'll be their second penalty in this short series. No, let's see. It might be on Tech. Goff out on the field again asking about it. The officials are talking over across the field also. They're going to measure the chain to see what uh, the dogs want or don't want. Let's see. Now they look at it. They barely bring the chain out a foot or two to look at it over on the 44 and a half. It is a first down on the short running pass. Warren? What Ray Goff wanted the uh, team to do was get the measurement to see if it were a first down because uh, if they had taken the penalty, it would not have been the first down. The issue was whether or not it was a first down. So uh, since it is a first down, they obviously are going to take the play instead of the penalty. First down, dogs on the 44 and a half. In their own territory, leading 7 to nothing, And, boy, is it stubborn and tough. Georgia slots left. Six and a 5-2. Back shift again. Zire takes. Fakes comes out to the left, running, looking, fires. Complete for Hannon on the Tech 45. Great catch because he had to reach a little out in front of his chest. And it might be a first down. It might be 11 yards. Brian Bohannon hit by Mike Williams, a free safety immediately. And the dogs are moving again. They lead 7 to nothing. 12.35 to go and a half. Georgia in red. Tech all in white. Dogs put Hastings and Bohannon out to the right side. They're in an eye. Tech's in a 4-3. Zire handoff to Hurst. 5, 7, 8, 9. Down the sideline. Ran out of room. Out of bounds on the Tech. 33, about 11 yards. Rodney Wilkinson got him. The linebacker shoving him out. No more room. But Hurst took it from the 44 and a half down to the Tech. 33 and a half for 11 yards and a first down. And if you're counting the yards, what does he have now? 25 or 30, something like that. At about 34 yards now. Dogs split two men out. Hastings to the right. Bohannon to the left. They've come down to the Tech 33 and a half. They're just outside the 33. Sire going to take fake. Sprint to the right. Look. Fires a strong complete on the 31 and knocked out of bounds. Max Strong hit by Marlon Williams, an outside linebacker. Zire hit him for about a three-yard play, and that's all it is to the 30. Second down and seven. Seven to nothing, Georgia leading. Dogs fumbled on the Tech one-foot line. Tech fumbled it right back there. And then Georgia scored. The dogs so. heading on the Georgia Tech 30. Got a seven-point lead with 12.03 to go. Georgia up to the line, slot left. Run a shotgun, fake a trap. Sire out to the left, drawing a deflected pass. Incomplete. Some big lineman in front of him. Rodney Wilkerson deflected it. It's fourth down. Tech is stiffened again. Georgia will try another field goal. They missed one earlier. Fourth down, seven. Armstrong to hold on the 37. Todd Peterson to try a field goal. Going to try a 47-yarder. The kick is reaching. It is short under the bar. Didn't quite get under it enough. Dogs now have missed two field goals. And they still lead only 7 to nothing. We have reports that there are major traffic problems in the town of Athens or near its suburbs. People still trying to reach the stadium this late in the game. Pause for these words here. Time out of the game. Check up to the line with Sean Jones, Michael Smith, and Jimmy Lincoln in the box here in a pro set. Dogs in the 4-3 fake. Sean Jones out. Throws out on the flat. Complete on the 32-yard line. And the secondary ran him out on the 36. Jimmy Lincoln, the running back, coming out wide to the right side. Buster Owens had to hit him. Red shirt freshman out of LaGrange. On the 36, they got six yards. Sean Jones came out right and threw it right. And it's going to be second and four. Seven to nothing, stubborn, tough game. Had three fumbles early. Georges missed two field goals. 
Peck has three receivers wide left. Trips, as they call it. There's a hole at the tackle, and they ran Jimmy Lincoln. He only got a couple. He ran to the short side. Damon Ward hit him. They're only going to give him one, I believe, to the 37-yard line. They put trips out on the left and then ran the running back off right tackle for a yard. Third down and three. Seven to nothing, Georgia leading early here in the second quarter. Georgia Tech up to the line. Slot to the right short. Receiver to the left, not really wide. And Sean Jones dropping back. Whips it over the middle, incomplete. Almost intercepted by Damon Ward, the linebacker. Just as the receiver was going to catch it on the 45, Damon Ward cut right in front of him, just eight yards across the line and couldn't hang on. Fourth down, and Jason Bender, the sophomore, will punt. These two teams waste no time getting ready. Ten men on the line. The snap is good, and the kick short and end over end. Hastings on the 25, ran by one, ran by another, and up to the 40, to the 45, flag down, way back behind the play. That's in a bad sign. Dog's got a man hurt back there on the 27 also. Hastings had a good return. Good return up to near the 45. The young linebacker Philip Daniels is hurt and coming off. Now he's walking off all right, and Georgia is retreating, expecting a penalty. <laughs> May have had an illegal block. One of the better returns for Andre Hastings in some time. Yeah. He really had a dismal game against Auburn. Big return wasted there. All the way back to the 19, first down there. Timeout again. Let's pause for the two men left. One man split right, one back, gives it to the back. Hurst, 5, 7, 10, 15, 20, up to the 46 or 7. Hurst suddenly really going. Came up holding his left wrist. I'm watching it. Rodney Wilkerson got him from behind. Hurst holding his wrist a little. Hurst burst quickly from the 19 to the 40. Six-yard line, it's 26, 27 yards. Terrell Davis in. Hurst came up holding that left wrist, and they're going to look at it. Boy, he shot straight ahead, seven, eight strides, and then leaned a little right, and it's a first down. Ball up in the 46 after a 27-yard run. Texan a five-man front. Zaire fakes, comes out to the left, fires. Incomplete. He missed the receiver because the defender was off a blocker knocking him down on the 50. Bryce Hunter, a youngster. Zaire did not throw it well, and it's second down. I'm still trying to find Hurst now down on the sideline. Is he all right? I think he is now. I'm looking at him. Second and 10. George out on the 46. Hurst got them out of a hole. 10 minutes, 11 seconds to go and a half. Three wide outs. Texan a 4-4. Zaire, second down. Toss sweep to Terrell Davis, who cut in. Stiff-armed a man, got outside to the 50. Took it down to the Tech 47. A good, tough six-yard run. He stiff-armed one man. Coleman Rudolph, the tackle, got him. Terrell Davis, a sophomore, where he's 199. First has come back in, and the ball is marked down on the Georgia Tech 47. It's now third down and four. And as he reports back in, Garrison Hurst, 10 rushes for 73 yards after that 27-yard scamper. And the dogs want to call time here. 9.36 and a half. Time out. These words on the Georgia Bulldog Network. Well, Garrison Hurst is going back in there, Larry. He's okay, but we'll get a little update on his condition from one of the team physicians, Ron Ellett. Uh, what is the situation, Ron, with Garrison? Garrison had a turf toe injury earlier in the season, and it's been bothering from time to time when he cuts or catches his uh, foot in the turf, and that's just what's happened. Kind of aggravates it for a short period of time, but he's taped up, and he should do okay. All right, that's Ron Elliott, one of the Georgia team physicians. We go back upstairs to Larry Munson. They're down three and a half, if you want to be technical. The ball is on the 47, and they got to get across the 44 for a first down. Both Terrell Davis and Hurst are in there right now. Houston defeated Rice 61 to 34. Rice has had a fine young running back, Trevor Cobb, these last four years. He's really meant a lot to their program. The Dogs on third down and 
Tech is in a 5-2 with the backers up in there tight. Hurst in motion, stops, and they go to Terrell Davis, and he drives for a first down to the 43. He got himself about four, four and a half yards. Richard Kimsey hit him the defensive end. Kimsey's been missing a few weeks with an injury, as you know. We haven't seen those two work as a tandem in no. the backfield too much. Hurst and, and Davis, Hurst kind of a decoy on that play as a receiver. I think Ray might have made that insertion. He might have put Davis in that backfield himself. He's got the headset on now and likes the way he runs. First down. Hurst came out and stopped right outside the end and then became a blocker on the left side. The back shift now. First down on the Tech 43. Zyre going to give it to Hurst at the tackle, and he bursts down to the Tech 36. He just shot in there and got about six and a half. Jamal Cox, the linebacker, got him. And they will spot it where? It is on the 36, and it's second down. He got about seven instead of six. Second down and three. Dogs in a pro set. They give it to Hurst, trying to get him outside. He can't go out. He got to the corner and lunged for a first down, and he may have gotten it. Over on in front of the Tech bench on the 32-yard line, Kevin Peebles, a safety, Curly Day. Curly Day, the corner got him. It is a first down. He got three and a half and got it down to the 32. Now Max Strong comes out, and Terrell Davis will come back in. Dogs driving it steadily. Mostly on the ground right now. And they've driven to the Georgia Tech 32. Seven to nothing Georgia leading. 8.32 and a half. Tech's in a tight 4-3. Zyre, toss sweep to Hurst. Trying to pick a hole. Hurst cuts in. Two men pinch him on the 26. We got about six more yards. Georgia's pounding it in there now. Hit by Wilkerson and Cox, the two linebackers. Ball's inside the 26. He got six yards, and it's second down and four. Seven to nothing, Georgia. Dogs driving steadily. Remember now, they've missed two field goals today. Pro set. Texan a 5-2. And there's movement. Zyre then quickly put his knee on the ground after Tex right tackle jump. And try and make sure that penalty gets on the defense. Let's see what we got. I don't know. Tex right tackle jump. Yes, five-yard penalty. First down. Five-yard penalty on Tech. Ball just outside the 20. Dogs knocking on the door. 7.54 to go in the second quarter. They break Bryce Hunter out to the right. Jeff Thomas to the left. They have young receivers on the field. First down with the ball just outside the 20 here in the second quarter. Zyre looking at a five-man line. Going to give it to Max Strong, who cuts back in the middle. Four or five. No, that's Terrell Davis. No, that was Max Strong leaning inside. Four or five white jerseys hit him. And the game was about three. And it's second down and seven. Max started at left tackle and then tried to cut it back. The gain was three, second and seven. Seven to nothing, Georgia leading middle of the second quarter. And now a little bit past that. Dogs split those young receivers out there again. Tex in a 4-2. Georgia's in an eye. Zyre going to take it, give it to Hurst. Hurst trying to cut. Does cut and gets it down to about the 12. Got six more. He went at right tackle following in the blockers. Couldn't quite get enough. Peoples hit him, uh, the safety, and Wilkinson, the linebacker, hit him. The ball is just outside the 11. The gain was six. It's third and a yard and a half. He got about five and a half on the play. Ball just inside the 12. They have to go just... Outside the 10. Third down, and he's not quite two yards. Toss sweep to Hurst, pushing with his blockers to the 10, and then they drive him back, and I don't know. That's close. Hurst went at right tackle, and Tech shoved the blockers back, and we'll have to see the spot. He may not have made it. He got a yard, but I don't think he got two. Seven to nothing, Georgia. Dogs have made a long, successful drive on the ground here. on the 11 
it's fourth down, and they got about two feet to go. 6.04. They tell me Hurst has 96 yards at the moment. Seven to nothing. Georgia needs a short yard. Break one man, Hunter out to the left. Texan a 6-3. Zire barking long signals and an audible still barking him. And now the flag dropped and we'll take a penalty. Georgia couldn't get the playoff. And the dogs on fourth down in a short yard took too much time. And it's a five-yard penalty. And now they'll go again probably for a field goal. Lauren, what do you got? Larry, I'm not sure, but I suspect, uh, as I say, I'm not sure, but I suspect that uh, that was intended. They were going to go for the field goal, but they were hoping that Tech might jump. And since they didn't, they still got a chance to kick the field goal with only a five-yard penalty. So I think that uh, delayed snap there was uh, in intentional, hoping that Tech would jump off sides. I do, too. I felt that while he was doing it because his count was so long. So for the third time today in the first half, Georgia goes for a field goal. Ball held between the 22 and the 23. Set it down and Peterson sticks up a lot of power. Good. And Georgia leads 10 to nothing. 5.25 and a half. Time out these words in the Georgia second quarter. Peterson hit it short. End over end high around the 10. Taken on the 10 by McGill. Going wide left, 15, 20, 25. 30 from behind, pull down around the 37 or so. He had pretty good speed. Hit by Charles Pledger, a member of the secondary. Now Tech will have good field position. They have not gone much to the air, and they have not run that option with Sean Jones, which is one of the things we've all waited for. Tech first down on their own 37 and a half ball, not quite up on the 38. They're in an eye. They have two men split. Now they run one man in motion back over to the wide side, and Sean Jones goes to the tail, and the dogs meet him right there. Dorsey Levens went back over to the weak side or short side of the field for a yard, and the defense, Mitch Davis, made him head on. Ball is up on the 39. Let's give him two. Second down and eight. Second down, eight, a full eight. Tech trailing 10 to nothing, 4.47 to go. Two men split left, one man right, but they're not out wide. One back. Now they run a man in motion, and Sean Jones is back to pass. Dumps it out here in the flat, and it's complete to Michael Smith on the 40, the 45, near 50. Might be a first down as Pledger rolled him out. Dumped it to a back, sprinting out on the right side. Sean Jones hit him, and from the 39... They got about 11 yards, 10 yards to the 49, and it's a first down. The tackle came right in front of Ray Goff on the Georgia bench. Ray saw, in his estimation, an illegal block, a clip or something that went uncalled. Tech loves to throw out of that one back set. It's almost automatic. Very rarely, unless they have two backs, that's when they're going to run. But they like to throw with a single back. Georgia Tech trying to move. It's 10 to nothing. A little over four minutes to go here in the second quarter. Three wideouts, one running back. John Jones gives it to Levens, who starts at the tackle, and the linebackers close a hole on the Georgia 48. Levens hit by Travis Jones and Torrey Evans, a couple of linebackers. Ball is spotted on the 47. The gain was just about four, second and six. Clock running, getting late in the second quarter, 10 to nothing, Georgia. Tech up to the line. They got three wideouts and one back. Sean Jones looking at a 4-3. Jones going to take it and drop back. Threw it right over on the right side of the tight end. Complete, and they hit him on a 41. Might be a first down. Let's see. He just dumped it quickly to the tight end across the line. Todd Vance, a big sophomore tight end, caught that. 6'4", 236 from Buford, Georgia. Officials say we may have to measure this one. Wilson, the cornerback, the man that hit him. The ball is around the Georgia 42. That's where they had to go, and it's over here on this side of the field. And the chain gang was on the other. 316, and Tech moving. The skies are dark and threatening again. But when I say threatening, I mean snow, not rain. 
officials are measuring for it. We had some close measurements today. Ten to nothing, dogs lead. No officials finally now putting the ball down on the 41-yard line. Inches shy of a first down. Remember, about a half hour ago, Tech gambled when they needed a few inches on the dogs' 35. In fact, they only needed about two. Here they are now, third down, and they need about two again. Ten to nothing. Tech on the Georgia 41. Everybody jammed in close. Tech's in the power eye on the toss sweep, and they break a man outside with a blocker and get about ten yards of the 30. Jimmy Lincoln wide outside with everybody massed inside. They ran a little toss sweep from the Georgia 41. And he went out close to the 30, 11 quick yards. Damon Ward had to get him. He got 11 yards to the 30, first down. Tech knocking on the door now, seriously here for the first time. Dogs lead 10 to nothing. Tech getting some yardage on the ground. They run Lincoln in and take Michael Smith out. They interchange their backs a lot. Now they have three receivers wide left. One running back. And they give it to him, Lincoln, and he got hit right there. In fact, a yard or two behind the line. Jimmy Lincoln hit. Greg Jackson broke in and hit him first. Casey Barnum, the nose guard, hit him. And the ball is put down on the 32 and a half. They lost two and a half big yards right there. The way Sean Jones stopped behind him after handing it off, you almost expected him to flip it back. Next, Michael Smith is a lone back. Three wideouts, two right and one left. Second down, a full 12 to go or better. Jones coming back to pass. They're coming on him, and they miss him. They're chasing him behind the line. He's running far across the field, and he threw it out of bounds. Mitch Davis was really chasing him across the field. So it was big John Wallace. So was Greg Jackson chasing him over there. He finally just sprinted for his life is what he was doing. Greg Tremble was the other man, I believe, that was chasing him. No, it was Carlo Butler. Ball on the 32, third and 12. Tex got Jimmy Lincoln as a lone back. 10 to nothing. Linebackers faking blitz, and now they're on a hole, and Lincoln cuts into the 20, to the 20, to the 15, hit from behind around the four. They ran a trap with Jimmy Lincoln and caught the dogs who were blitzing a little on third and 12, and from the 32, Lincoln got 28 yards down to the four. And now Tech really knocks on the door here with 2.06 to go. Boy, did he have a hole on that. It'll be first down, goal to go, and Georgia calls time. So do we. Time out these words on the Georgia Bulldog Network. Ryan tells me that Tech now has 93 rushing. Lincoln's got 70. Ten seconds here, station identification on the Georgia Bulldog Network. Tech's on the four, moving it well on the ground. And so far, still not running Sean Jones on any kind of an option thing. And remember, Coach Bill Lewis is... Uh, East Carolina teams ran a lot of options. Dogs trying to protect a 10 to nothing lead. The whole stadium comes up here. Two minutes to go and a half. Texan a power eye. Deep back is Lincoln. Sean Jones looking at them. Jones coming out to the right looking as they chase him. They're chasing the sideline and they sacked him on the 20. Godfrey got him from behind, back on the 20. Sean Jones took a 16-yard loss. Never saw Godfrey coming up behind him to the last second. Couldn't move his feet away fast enough. He got tackled from behind down around the ankles. 16-yard loss, second down. Tech trying to get on the board. It's 10 to nothing. Tech taking a huddle here. 86 seconds. Georgia players ask the crowd to make noise for the defense. Three wideouts, one back. The back is Michael Smith. 
Jones back to pass, looking. There he goes for the corner, and he overthrew everybody. Incomplete. Defender and the receiver deep in the end zone. It was Keenan Walker. It stopped the clock with only 70 seconds to go here in the half. Tech will be third down. Remember now, George has missed two field goals today. Tech third down and goal to go out in the 20. 10 to nothing, Georgia leads. Tech has made a change at the receivers. McGill and Zachary Rodriguez are the receivers. No, Goolsby is there. They got four receivers, no backs. Back to throw comes Sean Jones. Looking, looking, they chase him, and now he threw it a mile in the crowd, way over the hedge. Dogs had him covered, and one man fighting a blocker in front of him was Mitch Davis, forcing him to dance around back there. It's fourth down. Defense holding, but now Tech with Scott Sissons will be trying a field goal, and this is a guy who has really had a great career. The yep. senior out of Marietta. Ray Goff has called him the best field goal kicker in the country. That was middle of this week he made that comment, and he might be. Tech going to hold it on the 27-yard line, just outside the 27. George almost jumped offside. They set it down, and the kick is up, and the kick is good. And it's 10-3. to 3. Timeout. These were Tech in a funny lineup as if they could probably try to squib a ball. Sisson approaches, but he kicks it deep. Long and deep. Five yards in the end zone and down by Hurst. So the dogs at 56 seconds to go on the half will bring it out here and put it in play on the 20 with very little time left in the half. One trying to win the sixth game of the year. The other one trying to win their ninth of the year. Georgia now time for a few plays. Dogs only have one timeout left at that scoreboard's right. Tech's in a 5-2. The back shift. Strong gets in front of Hurst. Sire going to take it. Going to go to Hurst, who spins and twists in the middle, leaning just inside a right tackle and got two or two and a half yards. And a little hole in the middle as he came through. He tried to lean to the right. And the dogs call time there with 44 seconds to stop it. Nuss and Peoples on the stop. Bill Nuss, a linebacker. Kevin Peoples, a strong safety. He got a couple yards. Time out here, 44 seconds in the half. He's Georgia. Run a trap with Terrell Davis driving over the 25 out to the 27 for about four more yards. And now we may call time and our one timeout. Tom Johnson, the linebacker, got him. No, our tech call time, 37 seconds. And that play grounded out to the 27 or 8. O'Brien, you said Hurst had how many yards? 97 yards on 16 carries. He's averaging six yards a pop today and continues his good work against this Georgia Tech team. 175 yards against them last year. And you remember what Herschel Walker used to do against Georgia Tech. Some rather productive days to put it mildly. And this guy doing the same thing. If he can duplicate this in the second half, now there's still a football game to win, but he has got to be considered if he has this kind of half in the second half, the odds on guy for the Heisman Trophy. But there are many voters around the country I know who think he's coming from third place. Yeah. Of the three guys. We run Hastings in motion right to left. They run that toss sweep to Hurst. He wants to cut in, and there's no room. Tech diagnosed the play and called time. They want to get that ball back. Hurst came sweeping over here where the receiver had gone in motion. Lost the yard on the play to the 26. Marlon Williams played it well. The outside linebacker. Tech stopped the clock with 31 seconds. They want the ball. Michael Smith. Now the officials will let him go. Tech loaded up the line pretty good. Armstrong waits. Almost got it, but he got off and they knocked him down. High, short punt on the 31. Georgia going to chase him and knock him down the 28. They really knocked Armstrong down. The official standing right on the play is saying no. Then they're shoving out around the 50 between members of the two teams. There's a flag down there too, Larry. 
but not back by the punter where no. Georgia thought there should be a flag. There's a flag near the 50. Let's see what that is. There's only 20 seconds in the half. Lauren? Larry, it's a clip on the Garrison Hurst, and the Georgia players were really upset. They thought it was a cheap shot, so they rallied to where Hurst was, and they wanted to let him know that they were really ready to challenge the opposing team on that clip. Finally on Georgia Tech. Tech has a man shaken up. Michael Smith, I believe, the punt returner, being helped off the far side. Yeah, that's something. It's somebody out in the middle of the field, 25 yards away from the ball, would try to clip some guy on the back of his legs. Oh, and going back to the punt, you know, when your punter gets erased and the official has to help him up, that's usually a pretty good sign. Tech got pretty close to that punt, didn't they? Yeah, they, they had did. three guys right on him. Ball on the 18 with 20 seconds left and a half. 10 to 3, Georgia. These two squads have spent the last six, seven minutes trying to play one minute. No running backs, four wideouts, and Sean Jones is back to pass. Looking, 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 and tripped and knocked down on the 18 by Greg Jackson. And it'll be second down, and the clock running. Tech may or may not get its men back to the line. Clock is going to run out, and Georgia leads at the half, 10-3. to Timeout, these words on the Georgia. Sisson tees it up at the 35-yard line. And we are getting ready for football battle here in the second half. Scott Sisson now on the running start, gets his foot into it, and gets it a line drive end over end, deep into the end zone, and just a yard back of the end zone is Garrison Hurst. He's going nowhere fast. And he has the touchback, and the dogs will start first and ten, going right to left, attacking the west end zone of Georgia Tech here to open up the third period of play. So the Yellow Jackets will start the second half on defense with Marlon Williams and Tom Johnson outside linebackers. Tackles Coleman, Rudolph, and Steve Farr, and Brian Baxter up front. Inside, Jamal Cox and Rodney Wilkerson. Outside, Curly Day and Lethon Flowers at the corners. Strong safety, Kevin Peoples. Free safety, Mike Williams. Georgia goes from the divide backfield to the I formation with the scat back. Harrison Hurst, fake on the toss, sprinting right as Zyre at the 15, bolts and complete across the 35 to the 36 yard line. It's the tight end Shannon Mitchell, the junior from Alcoa, Tennessee. And right off the back, Georgia strikes for a big gain on first down for another first down of the ball game. That was a little bootleg action. Ja uh, Mitchell came off from the tight end over in the right flat over there. and. Zyre, after a nice fake, got outside of containment and hit him for the first down. 87 yards passing so far for Eric Zyre. First and 10 from the 36 on the fake. Play action pass. Fires it out on the far flat complete to Max Strong up to the 42-yard line. He's pulled down by Georgia Tech's Jamal Cox. On the pickup. On first down for the University of Georgia. They'll spot the ball at the 44-yard line. Make it second down and three for the Bulldogs. Good pressure by Coleman Rudolph, who hit Zyre, who got up a little gingerly after he got hit, but nevertheless, Georgia picks up eight on first down. Bohannon to the near side, Hastings to the far side. Quarterback Eric Zyre in the divide backfield on the drop. On the pass to Hastings, right at the line of scrimmage. He's going nowhere, and he gets dropped. Rodney Wilkerson wrapping up Andre Hastings for a loss on the play for the University of Georgia. It'll be third down. Good read by Wilkerson that time. Georgia's tried that play two times, and it's come up short for him both times. Uh, Rodney Wilkerson reading Hastings on that inside screen all the way, coming up with a loss. Came a possession play. Third down, a long three. Georgia going right to left. Looking at the Georgia Tech shade 50 defense. They'll throw two receivers to the far side. They're in the I formation on third and three. Calling signals, quarterback Eric Zyre fakes the handoff, throws it on the far flat, complete for a first down inside Tech territory. At the 47-yard line, the split end Brian Bohannon hauling it in and falling down. Right there on the play was linebacker Marlon Williams. Bohannon just simply ran an out pattern. Tech in three deep zone coverage. He was wide open on the zone coverage. They came over, but... Quarterback oh, Eric Zyre fakes the pitch, rolls to his left, fires it on the far flat to Hastings, complete at the 41-yard line and spun out of bounds at the Tech 40 by Marlon Williams. Flanker Andre Hastings hauling it in on the far flat out of Morrow High School. Marlon Williams is giving a lick to Andre Hastings. Well, George has come out, Bob, in their first five plays of this second half. They've thrown passes. They've completed all of them. 
Second down and two from the Georgia Tech 40. The Bulldogs break the huddle. Again, they'll throw Hastings to the top of the field. To the bottom will be Brian Bohannon. First, the tail back in the eye, now in motion to the near side. The toss to Strong, cuts it inside across the 40, looking for some blockers. Takes it around the boundary corner and out of bounds. At about the 34-yard line, knocked out by right corner, Lethon Flowers. So another first down accrued by the Georgia Bulldogs, number 14 of the afternoon. Georgia on the move now. They started this drive at the 20-yard line. And they're only six plays into it. They're at the Tech 35-yard line. The ball on the near hash mark to the Georgia sideline, the far side from the Tech sideline over on the north side of Sanford Stadium. Hastings now way across the field. To the near side, it's Brian Bohannon. Again, the Bulldogs in their standard eye. The tail cutting it right side. It's Garrison Hurst still on his feet inside the 30 of Georgia Tech to the 29. Georgia Tech's Jamal Cox in on the stop. Lethon Flowers in on the tackle for Georgia Tech. Yellow Jackets just couldn't get their hands on speedy Garrison Hurst, a rush of six yards. Marlon Williams had him, look like had him wrapped up for no gain, but uh, Hurst with great uh, power pulled away from Williams, went upfield, picked up six yards. Georgia 10, Georgia Tech 3, 12-10 here in the third. There's a quick pass by Hastings at the 30, 25, 20, inside the 15, down to the 13-yard line of Georgia Tech. Rodney Wilkerson finally dragging him down. Hastings, Kim, to the far side of the field, just a little quick hitter about a yard off the line of scrimmage, and he did what he does best, and that's some good running. Tech playing a lot of cushion over there, and Zyre saw it through a little hitch pass to Hastings, and he wove his way downfield. First down, Georgia at the 14. Georgia with a seven-point lead of the Jackets, looking for more, going right to left. Here's the pitch to Garrison Hurst, looking for a blocker, cuts it inside, inside the 10, to the Georgia Tech seven-yard line. Raleigh Bulware and Tom Johnson coming in to take down Garrison Hurst, now over 100 yards in the ballgame. He's picked up 13 yards on his last two carries. Georgia just moving the ball at will now on Tech. Second down and three from the Tech 14-yard line. Tech with Hickson. Bill Noose, Tom Johnson, Robbie Bulware, and Brian Baxter in the Shade 50 defense. Max Strong now, the fullback in front of the tailback, Garrison Hurst, on second and three. The pitch goes to Hurst, cuts it inside left, inside the five, down to the Georgia Tech three-yard line for a first and goal for the Bulldogs. Tom Johnson knocking down Garrison Hurst, trying to put on a show not only for Georgia fans, but also for a national television audience and some 911 voters for the Heisman Trophy. Of which, Kim, I have my ballot in my bag. I will probably vote later tonight after this great day of Tech Georgia and Miami, Florida, uh, uh, San Diego State is done with. Will News comes off the field shaken up. So Bill News getting some help over to the Georgia Tech sideline. Tom Johnson, Raleigh Bulware, Brian Baxter, Elliot Fortune, Coleman Rudolph, Marlon Williams, Rodney Wilkerson, Jamal Cox, Curly Day, Lethon Flowers, Mike Williams, on for Georgia Tech. The 11 trying to bow their backs and stop Georgia. First and goal. The ball is outside the three-yard line. Eric Zier on the call. Gives it the pitch to Hertz. Goes around the corner. Bowls his way into the end zone for a touchdown. Number 17 of the year for Garrison Hurst, the junior from Lincoln County, Georgia. One shy of Tim Worley and also three shy of Herschel Walker for most rushing touchdowns in a season by a Georgia Bulldog. 11 play drive, 80 yards. Georgia came out and on the first six plays, five plays, they threw passes. Then they went to the running game. Hurst got the touchdown on the tall sweep to the left side. Todd Peterson on for the point after touchdown to give Georgia a 17-3 lead. The snap, the hold, the boot is up, 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 and good. One more for the dogs. And the score now on the Atlanta Journal-Constitution scoreboard with 10.49 left to go in the big one in the third period in Athens. It's Georgia into this contest. Georgia Tech now trailing 17-3. Todd Peterson will tee it up at his 35-yard line. Back deep for Georgia Tech. Lethon Flowers and Jason McGill. Yellow Jackets and Georgia Bulldogs in this clean, old-fashioned hate as Bill Cromartie penned in a great coffee table size book just a few years ago. Between the hedges here at Sanford Stadium in Athens, the sixth largest on-campus football facility. 
Here's a high kick, end over end, near side to Jason McGill at the five, cuts it on the other side, across the ten, trying to get a block, and does not. He falls down across the ten-yard line. As he tried, Kim, that time, and kind of running uh, no east, west to east, he tried to run from the south to the north, walking the picket fence and got felled by Chad Wilson, and the Yellow Jackets are deep in their territory, starting their offense. Good coverage by Georgia, and that time McGill tried to duplicate the run he made earlier, where he went from his right all the way over to the left, but Georgia just had too much quickness that time and knocked him down at the 10. Tech starts out in a hole. Todd Vance will be tight to the left side of the line with Brown, Bravey, Cheever, Milam, and Dukes. The offensive line for the Jackets in the I formation. William Bell, the fullback. Jimmy Lincoln is the tailback. For quarterback, Sean Jones pitches it to Jimmy Lincoln, tries to go around the corner across the line of scrimmage to the 11-yard line where he's knocked down there by a host of Georgia tacklers really doing a great job of swarming to the football. Linebacker Randall Godfrey and tackle Tom Wallace helping out for the Bulldogs. Not much room that time on the tall sweep to the left side. Lincoln hesitated a little bit, let the pursuit overrun him, and knife back up inside for two yards. Second down and a long nine. Ball between the 11 and 12-yard line on the far hash mark from our vantage point near side of the Tech sideline. Running into the quarterback is Jimmy Lincoln, and being tossed back for a loss is Jimmy Lincoln and the frustrated quarterback Sean Jones smacking his hands and coming over to talk to Jimmy Lincoln and the rest of the Jackets. That was just a miscue there on the handoff. Jones and Lincoln collided in the backfield and knocked Lincoln off his path, and when he tried to turn and change directions, Georgia Pursuit came in and knocked him down back at the uh, eight-yard line. Loss of uh, four. That is one thing Coach Bill Lewis feared. Sean Jones having to work second and long, second and eight, third and eight, third and ten. Right now it's third down and 12, deep inside Tech territory from the eight-yard line. The Dogs have a 4-3 look at the Yellow Jackets. On the draw is quarterback Sean Jones. Pressure fires at the ball. is complete for a first down at the 21-yard line to the split end Brent Goolsby going up the ladder against the secondary of the Georgia Bulldogs led by Charlie Clemens, their linebacker. That was a big league throw by Jones. He stayed in the pocket that time, and Goolsby worked over him. Georgia was in a two-deep zone, five-man coverage underneath. And Goosby got on the open sliver, caught it in traffic. Nice throw by Jones. Good catch by Goosby. John Jones needing 25 total yards here to be number one all time in the ACC. Keenan Walker comes in motion behind the line. The one back is William Bell. On the drop is Sean Jones. Fires a complete to Jason McGill across the 25, across the 30. And another first down to the 31 yard line of Georgia Tech. So another first down for the Yellow Jackets, trying to get back into this ball game. It's Georgia 17, Georgia Tech 3 here in the third period. 8.43 left to go. That was just a shallow crossing route with McGill coming underneath. Jones looking downfield and dumping off to him. McGill turned it upfield. They're going to bring the chains in to see whether or not he's got the first down. Ball is at the 31. Officials are pulling the chains out, checking now. First down, Tech. Well, still hadn't called it. Tech's come up. <laughs> I guess it's still going to be short, Bob. One inch. How yeah. about that? I'm telling you. The ACC crew, they'll spot the ball just outside the 30-yard line and just short of the 31-yard line. And referee Dale Phillips just putting his thumb and his forefinger just an inch apart. Tech was stopped on inches on third and fourth down on inches in the first half. So the Yellow Jackets break the huddle on second down. And inches, they throw three receivers to the far side. It's Rodriguez, Walker, and Goolsby. The one back is William Bell. The quarterback is Sean Jones, calling signals down the line. Gives it to William Bell. William Bell runs into a host of tacklers, but he has enough steam, Kim, to get back to the line of scrimmage. And Georgia Tech with 8.25 on the clock rolling here in the third period. They're driving east at Sanford Stadium. That means left to right here in the third period. They'll throw two receivers to the far side, one to the near side. On the drop, it's Sean Jones. Now a flag goes down. Jones gets rid of it over the head of Jason McGill at the 40-yard line. Got a holding call, Bob, that time on Jason Dukes. Just reached out and grabbed uh, the jersey of, I believe that was Mitch Davis he was holding on to. Everybody in the stadium saw it. No question about that. Georgia Tech penalized three times for 20 yards in the first half, four for 25 yards for the Dogs. 
Well, it's going to be a huge penalty because it's assessed where the infraction occurred. The holding call occurred up the 24-yard line, so 10 yards from there will put it all the way back to the 14-yard line. So Tech has got 27 yards to go for the first down. Well, Kim, they started just about that area after Georgia scored a touchdown on a three-yard run left side by tailback Garrison Hurst to make it 17-3 Georgia. With 8.09 left to go in the third period, that's where we stand. First and 25, it's Sean Jones faking the handoff at the five, airs it out across the middle, complete at the 30-yard line to Todd Vance, the tight end still on his feet and barreled down at the 36-yard line. A big, huge pickup for the Univ uh, Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets right corner Chris Wilson finally tumbling over Todd Vance. Nice job by Sean Jones. He was trying to go deep over the middle to Jason McGill, but Georgia in that zone coverage had it taken away, and Vance came off the line of scrimmage late. Linebackers took a deep drop. He was wide open. Jones dumped it off to him. Vance did a nice job getting it up to the 36-yard line. Senior quarterback Sean Jones leading Georgia Tech on second and five. And again, he runs into William Bell. He spins and gets a couple of yards, Kim, when it looked like he was going to just get hit at the line of scrimmage. Another miscommunication with the fullback, William Bell. He ran smack into William and really spun off him for a couple of positive yards for the Jackets. Well, Bell uh, ran into Jones then on that play. I think they were trying to set the option play with a fake inside and with Jones coming down the line. But nevertheless, uh, Jones fell back up inside to the 38, picked up a couple of yards. Tech with a big third down conversion here. Third down and two from the Georgia Tech 38-yard line. The Yellow Jackets in a one-back. William Bell. There's the drop by Jones. Firing, firing, complete. At the 45-yard line for the first down to flanker Bobby Rodriguez. Chris Wilson wrapping up Rodriguez around the hips. And a key first down for Georgia Tech in this drive, Kim. Good route by Rodriguez, Bob. He just sat down on the corner there when he knew that he got beyond the first yardage stick. He sat in the flat and Jones rifled the ball over there. Good play by the seniors, Rodriguez and Sean Jones. Third place all time for Bobby Rodriguez out of Staten Island. In catches for Georgia Tech ahead of John Sias. First and ten for the Jackets, going left to right. From the 44-yard line, the snap, the drop, and chasing Sean Jones. He's at his 30, 31, 35. Airs it down the sideline, and it's going to be caught, but out of bounds to Brent Goolsby. Brent Goolsby caught it anyway, but he was out of bounds. Second down and ten. Again, Georgia's defense chasing Sean Jones out of the pocket. Jones did a good job of getting the ball off and just throwing it out of bounds. He was trying to see if he couldn't find some folks open downfield, but nobody could, could get open. Wisely threw it out of bounds rather than taking the big loss. To make it second down and 10 from the Tech 44, William Bell comes out, replaced by Dorsey Levin, the redshirt junior from Syracuse, New York. Levin in the one back, second down and 10 from the 44. The snap and the drop by Sean Jones looking. Fires it complete again to Todd Vance again for a Georgia Tech first down at the Bulldog 41-yard line. Bob Vance was wide open from his tight end position, just hooked up over there in that zone area in the center of the field, and Jones got the ball to him. Nobody was near him. Georgia really had some trouble in that zone coverage that time, and Vance and Sean Jones taking advantage of it. Ollie Harris now, the senior from Douglas High School in Atlanta, Georgia, comes in. He'll split Brent Goolsby to the top of the field. To the near side, flanker is Bobby Rodriguez. Tech in the eye formation. The handoff to Levin. Straight up the middle, falls down across the 40 to the Bulldog 49-yard uh, line for a pickup of two yards for Dorsey Levin. Second down and eight for Georgia Tech. Casey Barnum, the senior from Jacksonville, Florida, the stop for the Bulldogs. Looks like Levin's lost his footing when he was trying to go off the left side, dove forward, only picked up a couple of yards. So Tech started this drive on their 10-yard line, and they've converted on five, four occasions here. Georgia Tech in the one back. It's Dorsey Levin's receivers, two to each side of the field. Now Rodriguez comes in motion. On the drop, flags are down. Jones goes to the far flat, in and out of the fingertips of Jason McGill. Going to have movement on Tech, and that's going to be a five-yard penalty. I believe, Bob, they're going to rule it came before the ball was put in play. Had it not, uh, then obviously Georgia might have had a chance of taking the play since it, since it was incomplete. So it's a dead ball foul, which means the ball was not put in play. Five yards will be assessed. Should bring the ball back to the Georgia 45. 
17 to 3. Georgia, ninth ranked in the country, looking to go 9 and 2 before going bowling. Yellow Jackets ending their season today, coming in with a record of 5 and 5. 5 16 clock running here in the third period. Georgia 17, Tech 3. Georgia Tech with dual receivers to the left side, one to the near side. Now Keenan Walker comes in motion behind the line. Two-step drop as Jones fires it again in and out of the hands at the 35-yard line of the split-end Brent Goolsby. Right there in the breadbasket, but he was collapsed on by the Georgia defense. And the ball bounds away, make it third and 14 for the Jackets. A very much a key drive here in the third period for the visiting Yellow Jackets. Dorsey Levens comes out. Yellow Jackets will employ four receivers and five, including the tight end Jeff Papashak. Three receivers to the far side, one to the near side. Papashak is tight on the line. No backs for Georgia Tech on the drop. Sean Jones, the ball is loose. It's fumbled at the 49-yard line of Georgia, and it's going to be Bulldog football. Sean Jones was trying to get rid of it, Kim, there, but before he caught the arm, the ball got dropped at midfield. And another turnover for the Jackets, their third fumble of the afternoon, and it goes back to the Bulldogs. For a big turnover for Georgia Tech. Started the drive on their 10 and used a lot of plays on the drive, a lot of clock. And a third down situation. Jones trying to get people open downfield, but the ball stripped by Mitch Davis. Pounced on by Georgia at their 49-yard line. Well, there's timeout on the field with the score. Georgia 17, Georgia Tech 3, 4.56 left here in the third period. We're back to Sanford Stadium in Athens after this. On the, w the ball at the 49-yard line. Handoff again goes to Garrison Hurst into Tech territory to the 47-yard line on the far hash mark. Garrison Hurst, the junior tailback, picks up four yards. Now 22 carries, 119 yards on the day, and one touchdown. Marlon Williams, the stop for the Jackets. Second down and six from the Tech 47-yard line. The Dogs break the huddle. Hastings and Mitchell to the near side. Brian Bohannon up top of the field. And the fake handoff to Hurst. Zire on the fire. Complete to Hastings right at the 37-yard line of the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. He's knocked out of bounds by right corner. Leaped on Flowers. First down for the Dogs. Bobby was wide open on the out pattern. Zire now in this second half on... The second possession Georgia's had has got time. He's not being pressured by Tech's defense as he was in that first half. Eric Zier from Marietta, Georgia, the sophomore, 6'2", 200 pounds, 15 of 20 in the afternoon. First and 10 for the Dogs, driving west from the Tech 37-yard line. A fake to the tailback. Play action pass. Eric Zier gets away from Lethon Flowers, being chased around on the move, fires it incomplete to Garrison Hurst, who was at the 20, Kim, came back up the near sideline at about the 25 to try to help out. But it's amazing three Yellow Jackets could not get Eric Zier. Lethon Flowers on the corner blitz that time, went up over the back. I believe it was Tom Johnson he went over. Couldn't hold on to Zyre, who scrambled out of there. Actually had containment broken, had a chance to pull it down and run, but elected to throw for Hastings, who was working back up the field for the ball on the Georgia sideline, but a little too hot incomplete. All right, it's second down and 10 from the 37-yard line. Georgia going right to left here in the third period with a two-touchdown lead on the Jackets. Their flags are down. Play action pass, finds the tight end. It's Shannon Mitchell inside the Tech 20 down to the 19-yard line. Shannon Mitchell on the fake to the tailback. Garrison Hurst but Kim a flag down at the 37-yard line of the line of scrimmage. They're going to bring this one back, I believe, Bob. Good fake that time by Zara, who rolled out on the bootleg and hit Shannon Mitchell. Now they're going to call offside on Tech. So uh, that's going to be first down as Mitchell caught the ball, advanced it all the way down to the 19-yard line of Tech. So Georgia on a roll now. They started this drive at their 49-yard line after Donnie Mabe came up with a Sean Jones fumble on third down. And with 3.46 to go in the clock running, Georgia gets in position to add more points to their 17-3 lead. The ball on the far hash mark. From our side, it goes to tailback. Garrison Hurst gets a big hole inside the Tech 10-yard line. And he finally drops at the seven first and goal Bulldog. Garrison Hurst getting the job done. Rodney Wilkerson coming in from behind to finally rip him down by the ankles. But I tell you what, Kim, just a burst of speed there for the junior from Lincolns in Georgia. That's what makes him so dangerous, that tremendous acceleration, and he makes cuts on a dime and really can cut back on you. He's a, he's a dangerous runner. First and goal from the Tech 7-yard line. The ball straight up the middle. 
Tech with a 5-2 defense. Hurst in motion. They give off to the fullback. Max Strong gets hit at the 5, but gets more inside the 5 to the 3. He gets felled by Georgia Tech free safety Mike Williams and help from inside linebacker Rodney Wilkerson. Second and goal for the Dogs from the Tech 3-yard line as one of the Yellow Jackets is down inside the 5. Looks like Jamal Cox was going to make the hit up at the line of scrimmage, but Strong fought through that, fought through a couple of other tackers, finally had his feet taken out from under him when he rolled up at the three-yard line to pick up a four. It's free safety Mike Williams, the senior, from Butler High School in Augusta, Georgia. He is laying prone on his back, stretched across the five-yard line inside the Tech five as the training help comes out from the Tech sideline. So it's been a quiet day offensively for the Jackets. An afternoon marked by miscues and penalties. Georgia 17, Georgia Tech 3. With 3.04 left to go here in the third period. The 87th renewal of the big one here in the state of Georgia. Max Strong with a one-yard run off of Michael Smith fumble at the one-foot line in the first period. A 33-yard field goal for Todd Peterson for Georgia in the second period. And uh, tailback Garrison Hurst from three yards out in the third period. And it's a 17-3 advantage for the Georgia Bulldogs. So put the ball at the Georgia Tech three-yard line. They have Marlon Williams, Tom Johnson, and outside linebackers across the front, Coleman Rudolph, Raleigh Bulware, and Steve Farr, Rodney Wilkerson, and Jamal Cox inside linebackers in their shade 50. Trying to bow their backs again on second and goal from the three. Zyre goes to Hurst. Hurst uh, gets the eight at the five, inside the five, and dives towards the marker. And he's going to be just short. He got the touchdown. touchdown. They give him the touchdown the far corner. He dove for that marker at the goal line. Everybody in pursuit. Second touchdown of the afternoon. Second consecutive touchdown for Heisman candidate Garrison Hurst. And the Bulldogs increase their lead to 23-3 on the jacket. So another three-yard touchdown run for Garrison Hurst. Scott Rissmiller will snap. Scott Armstrong will hold the PAT. For Todd Peterson is kicked and up and good. One more for the Bulldogs. The score now, ninth-ranked Georgia 24, the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets 3. We have 2.39 left to go here. In the third period, we'll pause 10 seconds for station identification on the WC and has split four and four. Dogs won 18-15 a year ago with some great defense down the stretch against Georgia Tech at Bobby Dodd Stadium in Atlanta. Yellow Jackets won here in their last visit with the national championship season of 1990 in a 40-23 pasting of the Dogs. Sean Jones now the all-time leader in total yardage in the Atlantic Coast Conference with over 9,000 yards surpassing Ben Bennett of the Duke Blue Devils. Todd Peterson set to go at the 35-yard line, gets his foot into it. It's going to be end over end, coming near side to Lethon Flowers. That's a nine. Takes it across the 15, 20, 25, 30. Still on its feet and spinning to the 32-yard line, where the Yellow Jackets will start their offense first and ten. The Jackets have done a pretty good job in that category of running back kickoff. No one to run back that many because the other team has scored. Georgia has put up three touchdowns and a field goal on the board here this afternoon. Capacity crowd 85,434. Only five other stadiums in the country hold more than Sanford Stadium here in Athens. Jason McGill split to the top of the field. To the near side, it's Bobby Rodriguez, the fake. It goes to Rodriguez, and the back of action airs it out down the final sideline for Jason McGill. It's knocked down at the 30-yard line. Tim just didn't have enough steam. Jason McGill during foot race with left corner Al Jackson. The old gadget play that worked earlier this year from flanker Bobby Rodriguez to Jason McGill for a touchdown against the North Carolina State. Well, you call it, Bob. Georgia was not through that time. Two men in coverage almost came up with the interception. Get back, uh, the flanker, touchdown pass from Rodriguez at the University of Virginia in Charlottesville. William Bell, the lone back behind quarterback Sean Jones, second and ten from the Tech 32. On the drop is Jones, looking, fires it on the flat, complete to William Bell, has 35, has 40, has the first down, Sutter steps up to the 45-yard line, and knocked out of bounds by the Georgia Bulldog free safety Greg Trimble, a first down for the Yellow Jackets. Good uh, play that time by Tech, Jones looking downfield, nobody open, Atlanta. 
Rogers took a deep drop. Bell swinging out of the backfield, caught it, was wide open, turned it upfield for a first down at the 45-yard line. Tech trailing by three touchdowns. If you include the point after, 21 points, they're down, 24-3. to 2-12 left to go here in the third period. They'll send Rodriguez to the near side, Walker and McGill to the far side. On the drop is Jones. Jones still looking and rolling back at his 31-yard line. Being chased, fires it to Jason McGill. It's tipped away at the 40-yard line. Four Bulldogs just surrounding Jason McGill, led by free safety Greg Tremble, incomplete. Mike Jones coming in with the coverage on the pass from his brother, Sean Jones. Wood that he tipped it, Todd. He threw it up, uh, looked like uh, in a whole host of Bulldogs, and Mike Jones' his brother tipped it, knocked it away incomplete, fortunate for Sean. So send flanker Bobby Rodriguez to the near side. You have Keenan Walker and Brent Goolsby to the far side. The run back is Dorsey Levins. It's Jones to Dorsey Levins on the swing pass at the 40, 45, in the Bulldog territory, down to the 41-yard line of Georgia, and another Yellow Jacket first down with 155 left to go here in the third period. It was a great run by Levins that time, and to show you what size can do, Bob, that time the linebacker came up and hit him right when he called it, Charlie Clemens, but Levins just ran right through him and got on that field for a first down. Well, personal record spell for Sean Jones, Coleman Rudolph, and Scott Sisson for the Jackets. Team-wise, they trail 24-3. to three. Again, two receivers to the left, one to the right. The lone back is Dorsey Levin. From the back, Sean Jones on first and ten. On the drop, on the fire, complete. At the 34-yard line, one more for flanker Bobby Rodriguez. He's knocked out of bounds by right corner Chris Wilson, the senior from Southwest High School in Macon. Bob Tech and uh, Sean Jones and Rodriguez ran for a world up up time. Jackson just had too much cushion over there, and all Rodriguez did was a little hitch on the sideline, and Jones raised up and hit him with a pass. Well, he's got gain for Sean Jones. Gould B and Keenan Walker. To the far side of the field, to the near side, it's Bobby Rodriguez. Dorsey Levins, the one back for Sean Jones on second and two from the Bulldog 33. Another drop. Jones looking, fires it across the middle, complete to the split on Brent Goolsby down on his knees at the 20 yard line of the Georgia Bulldogs. On first down for the Yellow Jackets, starting to move the football for the first time today. John Jones, 14 of 27 in his final game in a Yellow Jacket uniform. So Goolsby goes out. Jason McGill, the veteran junior, split end back in for Georgia Tech. McGill joins Keenan Walker to the left. Bobby Rodriguez to the right. Dorsey Levins, the lone back. John Jones on first and ten, on the drop, fires it to the near flat, complete. Bobby Rodriguez still on his feet, won't go down. He goes down now at the 14. For a pickup of seven yards on first down for the Jackets. They're driving left to right, or west to east, if you will, here at Sanford Stadium in the waning seconds of the third period. George in the blitz that time, and Rodriguez caught the ball with a man all over him. Refused to go down, got it down to the 14-yard line. Six-yard pickup. 40 seconds and the clock rolling here in the third period in Athens. It's Georgia 24, Georgia Tech 3. Yellow Jackets are threatening. Goolsby and Walker to the left side. Again, Rodriguez flanked to the near side. Levin now gets the handoff right side from Sean Jones inside the 10-yard line, 5, and pushed out of bounds at the 2-yard line. It'll be first and goal for Georgia Tech from the Bulldog 2. A little quick trap draw that time. Georgia looking for a throw from Jones, who's moved the ball pretty much exclusively in the air. But fooled Georgia with that little quick trap, and Levin's Broke the line of scrimmage, raced outside. He was just shoved out of bounds down at the two-yard line. Now Bill Lewis says Georgia's defense has been much maligned all year long. They've done it so far today. Tech trailing 24-3. First and goal for the Jackets at the two-yard line. It is the handoff to Dorsey Levins. Tries to cut it left side and gets knocked down. Right at the one-yard line, Greg Tremble, the free safety, coming in to help out for the Bulldogs. Nine seconds, eight. The clock will run out here in the third period of play as the Yellow Jackets will switch sides of the field at Sanford Stadium. And 45 minutes of the 87th renewal of the big one here in the state of Georgia. The score now, Georgia 24, Georgia Tech 3. Back with fourth quarter action after this on the WCNN Georgia Tech. Georgia defenders raising their arms and telling the crowd to support them. 
Tech second down, goal to go. One back, two wide outs. Sean Jones going to throw a lead pattern in the corner. Touchdown. He hit Bobby Rodriguez. He threw it about six feet over the defender's head in the right corner. Good lead pass, and it's 24 to 9. Tech finally gets on the board. Sisson in to try the extra point. Early today, the dogs missed two field goals. But in the third quarter, they ran that lead out to 24 to 3. Now it's 24 to 9. The snap, it's set down, and the kick is good, and it's 24 to 10. The lead is back to 14. Timeout. Let's pause for these words. Very high. And Hurst catches it on the run on the far sideline on the 8. And they rack him on the 25. Boy, was he flying when he caught that ball. But he had to run way over by the sideline to catch it on the run inside of the 10. They had him pinned, however, against that side, and there was no room. Ball on the 25, and it's first down there. Dogs are 75 yards away from it. They lead 24 to 10. 14-51. Jack Swan up over the ball. How many times in his life has he bent over the ball? He's played almost every down since he got here. Toss sweep to Hurst, cutting at the tackle. They hang on to him, and he only got about, well, at the most, three to the 28. Little hole at the left tackle. Richard Kimsey grabbed at him. Defensive end, and let's see where they're going to mark it. Two and a half yards, exactly. Second down, seven and a half. Play started out like he was going to have enough blocking over there at left tackle, and Tech shut it down. Dogs split three men out. Zire play action fake down the middle of the tight end. Complete the Mitchell on the 45 up to the 48 or 9. They're really throwing to that tight end today. And they got about 20, 21 yards. Frank Scott, the safety man, got him. They threw it to big Shannon Mitchell. And the dogs are moving the ball. 24 to 10. Georgia up to the ball. Now out there on their own 48. Terrell Davis is now the running back. And Tech's left tackle moved and shoved the Georgia right tackle back. Let's see the call on that. They haven't given the sign quite yet. Four of them got together for a moment. Tech is starting to retreat now. Yes, Tech was offside. He really jumped. And nobody drew him off with false movement. Five-yard penalty on Tech down to the Tech 47. And the dogs will become first and five. And leading 24 to 10. Sire underneath. 4-2 set up. And they're going to give it to Darrell Davis at the right tackle. And he's down to the 40 in the first down. He runs well. Got seven yards. Frank Scott, the safety man, pulled him down again. That's 21 yards off the bench for Terrell Davis. And you're right, Larry. He's at a pretty high per yards per carry average today, up around five and a half, six yards a pop. He's from Johns Island, South Carolina. I've never heard of that town. Ball on the 40, first down. Dogs in an eye. Texan a 4-3 in the back split. Zire takes it. Goes to Max Strong. Somebody blitzed under his feet and tripped him upside down on the 40. No gain. Got hit by Boyd Andrews, a middle linebacker. And then Coleman Rudolph was the second man on him. And it's second and ten. He started at left guard and left tackle and had a couple of blockers. But somebody came low, submarine. Fourth quarter, 24 to 10. Now Hurst is back in. So Tech will key on him. Dog slot right. Fake. Zire looks. Zire passes incomplete. Almost intercepted. It should have been on the 40 by Eric Fry, a linebacker. He had it in his hands twice. Juggling the ball way over in the flat as Zire threw it shy of the receiver. That could have been a big seven and a brand new ball game. Yeah, who catches him? I don't know what kind of foot speed he's got, but who catches him if he makes that interception? He's got plenty of green space in front of him. Zire, by the way, that pass play aside, pretty solid. 16 for 24, 173 yards. 
Third and ten. The drive bogging down on the Georgia Tech 40. Two wideouts right and one to the left. And Sires back to pass, looking, and now he's scrambling to the right, running for his life. Going to pass incomplete. He was out around midfield when he tried to go down the right side. Hastings was one of the men down there, and the drive is bogged down on the 40. 12-40 to play. 24-10, to 10, and Scott Armstrong, the punter, has come in. 24-10, to 10, the dogs lead by 14. Tech is going to load it up. Armstrong's kick, beautiful high ball, fair catch, call four on the five of the six. Jimmy Lincoln was back in that kick return. Armstrong got a fine punt that really helped the squad. Very high, and Lincoln backed up to catch it on a fair catch. Lincoln couldn't take a chance that it might bounce sideways or back. Ball on the six and a half, and it'll be Tech's ball there. First down, fourth quarter. Georgia Tech. Down there around their own seven. Sean Jones takes it back. Goes a sideline pattern, and the corners hit him right away up around the 12. Jason McGill hit right away by Chris Wilson. One of those senior corners that's leaving. Ball is up on about the 12 and a half exactly. The game was six, second down and four. Tech just had a 65-yard drive. Three wideouts and one running back. And Sean Jones back to pass. He's got all day, so he throws it out in the left flat. Complete behind the line, and the secondary finally gets him flagged down on the 24. Might be a penalty. Three men tackled him. One of them maybe got the face mask. I don't know. Dorsey Levins, the running back. He threw it on the flat. And Georgia comes up pointing at Tech. Damon Ward, the linebacker, was pointing at Georgia Tech. He threw it at Dorsey Levens, and let's see what we've got. No sign yet. Going to be an illegal block on Tech. Levens had taken a short, flat pass and had gained about nine yards with it, but Tech is going to get penalized, and that'll hurt their drive. 24 to 10, Georgia leading, 11.48 to play. Tech has really gone to the air in this second half. Ball comes back to the 12 and a half. Second down. Each team with three timeouts left. George is in a four-man front. Sean Jones of Tech is back to pass. One man missed him. He dropped the ball as he runs, and then he falls on it and may have a first down. He dropped the ball as he was running. He kicked it with his knee forward six or seven yards and apparently got a first down with it on the 19. Tom Wallace was grabbing at him as he went down. They spotted on the 18, and it is a first down. About six yards on that fumble. Boy, did he have room to run. First down, Georgia Tech on the 18. They're down 24 to 10. They split three men out. George is in a four-man front again, and Sean Jones of Tech is back to pass. Out there in the flat, he throws it to Levens, and the linebackers come up, led by Damon Ward, and hit him on the 16. There'll be no gain back there. Damon Ward, the sophomore out of Memphis, hit him. A little flat pass. It may have lost a yard or so. Let's see where they spot it, however. They were inside of the 19. They lost a couple yards back to the 17, second down. Vanderbilt today got nine points ahead of Tennessee in the fourth quarter and got beat 29 to 25. Second down. Georgia Tech on the 17. They run a man in motion from right to left, and Jones, the quarterback, is back again to throw. Right down the middle, and it is complete to the 42-43 yard line to Brent Goolsby. Breaking left to right, right over the middle. And got about 27 yards out to the 44. Al Jackson hit him and Chris Wilson. And Tech is moving it through the air again with a little over 10 minutes to play. And it's 24 to 10. 
That's nine straight completions for Sean Jones. Mm. Georgia Tech, two receivers left, one to the right. The Yellow Jackets are bombing this thing. Sean Jones back, fires, batted down at the line or deflected at the line, maybe by Mitch Davis. Ball fell incomplete in the vicinity of the 50, near nobody, and it's second down. 9.48 to play, Georgia leads 24 to 10. Some fans left very early this evening when it was 24 to 3. It's 24 to 10 now, and Tech has really gone to the air hard. Two men left and two men right. They have four wide outs. They have one running back. Jones drops back to pass again. Fires missed him open on the 45. Jeff Popyashak, the big tight end. And now it'll be third down on their own 44. 9.42 9.42 to go. Pass after pass after pass. Mabe comes in and Wallace comes out. That tackle. Third down. Georgia Tech is third and ten. Three wide outs. Two left and one right. Crowd comes up making noise. The lead is two touchdowns. John Jones hollered to the right and stopped and ran a quarterback draw and dances out to the left of the 46 of the 49 of the 15. Got tackled on the Georgia 49. Ward from behind and Travis Jones from the front were the men that hit him. He wiggled and squirted for about seven yards to the Dogs 49. Ward was grabbing his shoe from behind and then came Travis Jones. Fourth down and three for Tech. They'll probably go for it. 24 to 10, 9 minutes and 12 seconds in the clock running. Tech comes up to the line, 4th and 3. Remember early today when they needed only inches on the dog 35 and didn't get it? One back. Sean Jones back, fires, and it is complete on the 40. He's pulling a cornerback with him, flag down all the way to the 30. Another flag down. Going to be a big play. we got penalties coming here. Going to be a face mask, I think. He hit the receiver right over the middle, Rodriguez, about 15 yards down the field. He pulled the defensive back. Al Jackson, 10 more yards. Somebody else came to help him. By that time, there were flags all over the place. Tech needed three. And got at least 20 on the play and a penalty coming. Station identification here, Georgia Bulldog Network, a division of the American Network Group. There are 11 convenient Kuppenheimer locations in the greater Atlanta area. Come see for yourself that our values fit your values. News Talk Radio, AM 750, WSB Atlanta. Penalty on the play, just five yards down to the inside the 24. But Tech's got a first down. They're knocking on the door again. They run a slot man in motion. And Sean Jones is back to pass. Fires down the middle and he missed him. He had two men down around the five-yard line. Jason McGill was one of the men. And Todd Vance, the tight end, was the other. 8.31 to play, 24 to 10. Tech on their second drive of this half that looks long. The other one went 65 yards and had a touchdown on the end of it. And this one, by the way, came after Scott Armstrong kicked him dead on the six-yard line. So they've gone 44, 64, they've gone 72 yards right now on this drive. Tech runs a slot man in motion. Jones back to pass, dumps it out here in the flat, complete, and Mike Jones came up and hit Dorsey Levens the back immediately on the 23. But he threw it over there and got a yard or two and no more. 24 to 10. Tech has cut it to 14, and they're throwing that ball. No gain. They put it right on the line of scrimmage. It's third and 10, and here again is a big third down play. Remember, we missed two field goals early. Clock ticks its way past eight minutes. Three wideouts. One back. Sean Jones underneath. Runs a trap, and the defense grabs him and knocks him down right there. Dorsey Levens on a trap in the middle. Hit on the 25 and then got two yards. Randall Godfrey stopped the play. Somebody bumped off him a step or so behind that. That was Barnum. Tech becomes fourth down and about nine and a half on the Dogs' 23. 
Tech is fourth down. Now it's these fourth and long plays where the dogs have had some critical difficulty, really only in two games, Tennessee and Florida. Don't want to give up another one here. Eric Billingsley has come in for Tech. Three wideouts, fourth down, nine and a half on the dogs, 23. Jones dropping back to pass. They blitz him as he throws. It's complete to the 15 and did not make the first down. Pledger saved the first down, an eight-yarder, eight and a half yards. A fine one-handed grab. Pledger got him behind on the hips and spun him down and the dogs have a first down on their own 15 they missed the first down by a yard and a half 24 to 10 tech just made a great drive of 74 yards 79 yards the split, they shift to an eye tech's in a 4-4 toss sweep to hurst he cuts back in the middle trip from behind and down around the 18 and a half. Coleman Rudolph, the tackle got him. Marlon Williams got him. The outside linebacker, Hurst from the 15, got it to the 19 for four or more. It'll be second and six. I guess Hurst now is up around 140, huh, Dave, or close to that? George up to the line on the 19. They're in an eye. Tex in a 5-2. Now they back off to a 4-3. Sire takes it and looks and looks and looks and dumps it over the middle of the tight end. Mitchell and a first down on the 26. To a seven-yarder. Man, we've thrown to the tight end today long enough to go a whole season. Eric Fry, a linebacker, hit him. And the old, old, old spotter Dick Payne grins when he sees that. He's a tight end freak. First down on the 26-yard line. Clock moving a little over six minutes. And it's 24 to 10. Dogs break Bohannon and Hastings out to the right. Texan a 4-3. Sire takes, hands, Hurst cutting up the middle and pushing to maybe the 30. And then knocked back two and a half yards. He got about three yards. Had a pretty good push in there with Roberts and Swan and Stark. Let's see where they spot it. They put it right on the 30. He got three and a half, technically, and it's second down and six and a half. 526, the clock running. Georgia leading 24 to 10. Fans have been filing out slowly but steadily now for a few minutes since the dogs just stopped the drive barely on their own 15 by a yard and a half. We shift the backs back to an eye as we move Max Strong. Tech comes up close to the line of scrimmage. Sire throws it out here in the flat to Hastings. One-on-one, on one, he broke it. 35, 40, 45, 49, 50. Hastings got it out here to the 50. Kevin Peoples, a safety man. Flag down back at the line of scrimmage. Wait a minute, men. A 20-yard play may be taken away. 4.59 to go. He threw it out here to Hastings. They isolated him one-on-one. On one. He broke it. And there's a holding penalty, I believe, called on the offense. Georgia coaches next to us are a little bit upset. Dogs lead 24 to 10. And take a 10-yard penalty. Instead of being first down on the 50, they are now going to be second down on their own 19, I believe. Second down and about 17. Ball on the 19. Zire looking at the sideline, wanting to play. They bring it over to this hash mark. Almost had it on the wrong one. Second down and long. Got a 14-point lead. Now the clock starts. Bohannon to the right and Hastings to the left. Zire walks up behind center. Tex in a 4-3. Zire goes back to his shotgun. The snap. Run a trap. Max Strong. Can't go much. Didn't go anywhere. Max Strong got stopped right about the line of scrimmage. One of them was Marlon Williams, the outside linebacker. Ball going to be put right there. Just He got about a foot. Ball close to the 20-yard line. Third down now, 16 and a half. Sire looks at the sideline. They would like to have a first down here. They don't want to have that Air Force coming at them again. 
Got an eye, got a slot wide left. Texan a 5-2. Shire going to take it. Sprints to the left, needs a blocker, finds a man to the side. Hastings catches it, spins and twists and gets it up to the 31. They got it. Georgia's fourth down and five or five and a half to go. They're on their own 31 when they let them go. The lead is 14, but they've got to give the ball back to Tech. Lincoln is the deep man. Jimmy Lincoln ran very well for them last year when Bell was gone for the whole season. Scott Armstrong will want to kick it out of danger. 14-point lead. Reaching for win number nine. Tech was going after number six. And now they let them line up. And Tech's put ten men on the line. They look like they'll all come. The snap was a little high. He got it off. Low kick. Lincoln backs up. Dropped it on the 23. Starts to his right. Got in trouble on the sideline. And got yanked down over there. By Maurice Harrell, a linebacker. And the ball is in the vicinity of the 28. Exxon player of the game, Garrison Hurst, 27 rushes for 143 yards and two touchdowns. He caught two passes for three yards, one kickoff return for 17. He tied SEC and Georgia records for touchdowns in the season with 20. Tied the Georgia record for rushing TDs in the season with 18. Tex ball on their own 28, and Sean Jones, of course, is back to pass. Dumps it out in the flat, and Levins dropped the ball on the 25-yard line. Here comes that passing attack again. Tech had been 15 out of 29 at the end of the third quarter. But, boy, they have thrown it a ton. Uh, 40 times by my count. Well, was it that Houston guy today threw it 71, huh? 71 times. I mean, how many times do you get the ball in a game? I mean, you're throwing on every down. 24 to 10. Tech up to the line, three wideouts. Back to pass is Sean Jones. Right down the middle, complete on the 50-yard line. He stumbled off balance then and fell. Jason McGill, the wide receiver. He hit him for 24 yards and a first down of the 47. I'm going to tell you what, Tech's going to have a lot of yardage passing by the end of this day. Tech's 14 down. Here comes Sean Jones again, going to pass. They're going to chase him. Mitch Davis got him and sacked him back around the Tech 45. Mitch Davis got off his blocker and got him. And the sack on the play lost about nine, and Tech called time to stop the clock. Timeout. Let's pause for these words. Sean Georgia. Jones underneath, three wideouts. One running back. He drops back to pass again. Davis is coming on him, slid off him and missed him. Now they're going to chase him. He's springing up to the 35 to the 40 and steps out of bounds. Chased by linebackers as well as Tom Wallace, because Jackson and Davis were chasing him and Tom Wallace to tackle. Clock stopped at 3.09. Well, nice gesture there by Ray Goff, former quarterback himself. When Jones came over to the Georgia bench, racing out of bounds, he came over and grabbed Jones on the fanny. I'm sure said nice work, getting out of bounds, getting some yardage on that play. Loss of a couple of yards. It's third down and long now, about 21 or 22. Third down. Third down, about 22 for Tech on their own 41. They're 14 down. Three men right, one man left. Jones dropping back again. Now they're going to chase him again across the field. He stops and throws it a long mile, and it is intercepted. Flag down. Watch the call. Wait a minute. Greg Trimble caught the ball running across field just inside the receiver, but we may have something called here. He threw a flag down. Did Trimble hit the receiver as he took it away from him? What's the call? Pass interference on Georgia. And instead of the game ostensibly ending there, which it could almost have been over, Tech will get a life. They had been third down and long yardage, 21 or 22. And now they bring it back. 
to the 41-yard line in Tech territory and step off the 15-yard penalty to the Dogs 44, and they'll get a first down there. So Tech is still alive to pass it more. The crowd didn't like it. And the stadium is still two-thirds full. 24 to 10. Sean Jones has really put that ball in the air. I don't know how many times now. Jones takes it on first down. Back to pass again. He's going to throw a long ball in the corner, broken up by Al Jackson, who's with the receiver right down in the end zone in the right corner. 2.49 to play. Jason McGill. Jackson running right with him. Tech is throwing bomb after bomb after bomb. It'll be second down. It's 24 to 10. Do you have any idea, Dave, how many times they've passed? Yeah, he's attempted 42 times. And you know, not a lot of strategy here. It's just basically throw it up in the air. Three wideouts. He's back to pass again. He dumps it to a man coming across the middle complete, and he's out of bounds and might have a first down on the 33. I think he did. I think he got 11 yards. Todd Vance at tight end. And with 2.42, Tech has come down the field again. Tech has really thrown the ball and got a lot of yards in this fourth quarter. They're 14 down. First down, and the ball outside the Georgia 32. Georgia Tech up to the line. They split two men out. And one, four wide outs now. Back is Sean Jones. Davis chasing him. Throws on the run down the middle, complete on the 25, and he broke a tackle, and the receiver's going to go in the corner and score a touchdown. Dorsey Levin's a running back. Levin's delayed and then came across the middle about 15 yards down the field, and it's 24 to 16. And Tech has cut it down to eight, and suddenly it's a different situation. They chased him far across the field. Twenty-four sixteen, and Tech will try the extra point to try to cut it to seven. Remember, we missed two field goals early today. They set it down, and the kick is up, and the kick is good, and it's twenty-four to seventeen. Big kickoff coming up. Timeout. These words. This is something that all teams practice during each week because sometimes it it comes up and you need it. Well, they need it here. Here it comes. It hits the ground. It goes through a Georgia player's leg, and then Tech fell on the ball in the 43. Did it go 10 yards? Georgia's claiming no, it did not. The official haven't seen it. Let's wait and see. Did one official drop a flag? He did back in the 36-yard line. That ball had a Georgia man. It hit a Georgia man's leg, but it hadn't gone 10 yards when it did, and then everybody dove on the ball in the 43, and the officials are now talking about it. Because one official threw a flag back in the 36, which could be an offside on a kick. But let's see. Big discussion down there. Dogs hanging on 24-17. Yep. Offside on a kicking team, and he threw the flag down right away long before they dove on that ball. It hit Mitchell down around the shin. So Tech was offside. And now they'll try the whole thing again. We have a little drama in this old stadium. That well, was a scary moment because Tech did recover it. Even though they were offsides and it nullified it. Hard to do that two times in a row. The trick is you want the ball to strike the ground and jump up in the air when it bounces. And then everybody gets up and grabs. Now they got to do it from their own 30. And the dog's front restraining wall is between the Tech 40 and 45. The nine men. Hastings and Wilson are still the two deep men. So again, Tech lines up to try the onside kick. They're only seven points behind. It's 24 to 17. 
Their air attack in the fourth quarter's put them in the game, and here's a kick. And it's bouncing around, and a tech man caught the ball. And it's George's ball. Nobody touched it on the kick-receiving team, and it didn't quite get the necessary yards, and it'll be the dog's ball. There's still some shoving and jostling down there on the 40-yard line. A little bit of the uh, shoving is... Uh, A little violent, but now it'll be George's ball. He didn't kick it hard enough. And the tech man ran up to dive on that ball just shy of the 40 or so, and then everybody was on it. Now they will set it down on the 39 and a half. And it's the dog's ball. That's how close they were to recovering that ball on their own 40. Georgia up to the line, 2.28 to go, 24-17. Tech barely missed the onside kick. Zire underneath, give it to Hurst, cutting his way in the middle, and he's down close to the 35 as he squirted in there and got about four. And it'll be second down. Mike Williams hit him, the safety, Steve Farr, a linebacker. And Tech wants to call time and stop the clock. Time out. These words on the Jawan gets down the ball. Zire tells the crowd to be quiet. Backs are offset a little. Now Strong shifts and gets in front of Hurst. Second down. Toss sweep. Hurst cutting inside. 5, 10, 15, 20. Pushed out of bounds somewhere around the 18-yard line. Hurst bursting from the 35 and a half. And they shoved him out. After Hurst went, what, 17 yards, I believe. Yes, 17 yards down to the 18-yard line. Mike Williams pushed him out. The clock stopped at 2.10. Hurst just burst the 17-yarder. It's 24 to 17, but there's still plenty of time. Dogs split two men real wide this time and have an eye. Tech's up on a five. Hurst goes in motion over to the left. Toss sweep to Max Strong. He cuts inside the tackle. 5, 10, 12 yards down to about the 8. Hit by Marlon Williams, a linebacker from behind. Hurst really threw a block in the corner for him, among others. And Max Strong, now they're going to measure. They brought it back and spotted it on the 9. And they'll have to measure for the timeout. 1.57 to go. Max Strong started out and cut in. Hurst took the outside linebacker and he cut inside of him. And he's shy about a foot. The ball on the nine-yard line. Second down. It's 24 to 17. 164 yards for Garrison Hurst. You'd love to see him blowing up the middle and put a capper on this thing. Three touchdowns, 170-some-odd yards. That might get him the Heisman. Maybe. Zire tells the crowd to be quiet again. Second down. They need about a half a yard or less. They're in an eye. Tech's in a real tight 4-3. Now Hurst goes in motion the other direction. So they give it to Max Strong. First down as he bursts for four yards down to the five. A minute and 32 and the clock running. Steve Farr got him. Richard Kimsey got him. The two defensive ends pinching him. First down for the dogs on the five-yard line. 24 to 17, there's 90 seconds to go. Now the clock is running. Dogs are on to five. I'm gonna tell you what, the crowd wants another touchdown, what the crowd wants. Slot to the right, Zire tells the crowd to quiet down. The back shift, at least strong, shifted over to the left side of Hurst. Toss sweep to Hurst, he's gonna cut in at the tackle, he can't move. A half a yard, maybe. Tech could see that coming when Strong shifted over there. Strong got the end, but as he cut in, there was no room. Got a half a yard. Marlon Williams got him. He's made a lot of tackles today. 53 seconds. It's 24 to 17. This has been a tough son of a gun. It was 24 to 3. And it's now 24 to 17, and the clock is running. 40 seconds, and now less than that. Zire with the backs in an eye. Toss sweep to Hurst at the tackle. Hurst going to bounce out. Touchdown! Well, Hurst 
Bush just got five yards, four and a half or five, and it's 30 to 17. For some reason, that broke the left side of the scoreboard. That also broke the Georgia single season rushing for touchdowns record. He's got 19. It breaks Herschel Walker's record in 1981 of 18. 29 seconds, and it's 30 to 17. Hurst bounced outside for that. The extra point is good, and it's 31 to 17. So the lead is back to 14. The crowd wanted that score. And now they file out in earnest. Station identification here. This is the Georgia Bulldog Network, a division of the American Network Group. There are 11 convenient Kuppenheimer locations in the greater Atlanta area. Come see for yourself that our values fit your values. News Talk Radio, AM 750, WSB Atlanta. 169. All right, Lauren, down to you. What do you got? Well, we've got Bob Moore of the Citrus Bowl with us. Georgia, obviously, now a winner. Florida lost today. What can you tell the Georgia people? Tell you what, it's a great team, great fans, and... Uh, We'll see what works out, but it'd be look awful good to have you down there. We'll just have to see how the thing works out Sunday when we vote. Well, we think we know how you might vote. Will you have any support and sentiment for the Georgia angle? I think, uh, <laughs> obviously, you know how I vote, but I think that Georgia's played the way there. So I don't, uh, I think there's a lot of support for Georgia, but we'll, we'll have to see. All right, that's Bob Moore, who's not making a commitment, which we understand. Tech will have McGill and Flowers deep as Georgia will kick off with 29 seconds. 31 to 17. Peterson hits a dribbler, bouncing, rolling, and a Tech short man dropped it on the 21 or 2, and then he picks it up and starts up and gets tackled on the 32-yard line. Rodney Wilkerson, a linebacker, took a ground ball, as it turned out, dropped it, picked it up, and came straight ahead. 31 to 17. The dogs winning their ninth game of the year. And don't think that that's easy because it isn't. Ball on the 32, and Tech will air it out again. Tech up to the line. Sean Jones in a shotgun now. He's got a back standing there with him. Takes kind of a high snap, and he drops back. They're coming after him. And now he fires, and it is incomplete on the 45. 16, 16 seconds, seconds left to go. Left to Tenant go. for Todd Vance, a tight end. Damon Ward was back there fighting on pass defense. Al Jackson, the corner, was coming up. Tech is second down. They've thrown it. Boy, did they throw it in the fourth quarter. 31 to 17. Next year's game will be in Atlanta. And I'm talking about next year's Tech-Georgia game. You might order your tickets tomorrow. Georgia's in a three-man front. Now four as Harold, the linebacker, comes up in the left corner. Now, now he pulls off. Sean Jones back to pass. Flag down. And he's going to air out a long ball. And again, the dogs intercept down on the 24. Greg Trimble intercepted, but let's catch a possible penalty with six seconds. There's a discussion back down around the 30-yard line in Tech territory. Dogs, uh, defensive back intercepted his momentum, carried him out on the 23 or 4-yard line in Georgia territory. And the officials now are coming over to give a procedure penalty on the offense. So we'll decline it and take the ball with six seconds. Georgia a winner, 31 to 17, and they'll have time to run a play or fall on a play. It has not been easy, you guys. George's ball first down there, and they will run a play, and they're going to let Preston Jones run that, the backup quarterback. Earl Fouch, who ran very well in the junior varsity Cripple Children's game the other day, is in there at the tail. Rodney McCoy has come in at a wide out. 31-17. Dogs are in a huddle. Nine wins. 
And you can think back to a play or two or three or how close it could have been to 10. Six seconds. They're in an eye. The line is drawn close together. Tech is in a five, and Preston Jones kneels down, takes a loss, and lets the clock run out, and Georgia has defeated Georgia Tech 31 to 17. The dogs are winner. Tech really went to the air in that fourth quarter, starting about the middle of the third. But Georgia, a winner by 14 points, 31 to 17, and yes, Hurst had himself quite a day. But late in the game, so did Sean Jones. Dogs have won nine, and they'll head for a major bowl, and we won't know till tomorrow sometime where they're going. Dave O'Brien will be back now after these words on the Georgia.